but without any risk of loss ever. It's guaranteed money for life income, no matter how long you live. Call 888-509-2228. 888-509-2228. Sponsored by GP Agency, Inc., Raleigh, North Carolina. Licensed in all states. Performance may vary. Consult with your financial professional before making an investment. A day to remember. The least anticipated album tour. July 24th at the Astro Amphitheater. A day to remember with special guests. The story so far, four years strong and scowl. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. The wait is over. Don't miss a day to remember. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ, more wags, more fun. Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. Burton AC Heating, Plumbing, and More is partnering with Food Bank for the Heartlet. If you donate five cans of food, you can get an AC safety inspection and cleaning for only $55. As you turn on the AC and turn in five cans of food, you will help support our community by feeding families in need. Call 402-934-7003 or visit JustCallBurton.com. From upsets to buzzer beaters, nothing compares to college basketball in March. That's why they call it madness. But sometimes you're on the wrong end of these moments. Like if you were Kentucky against Duke, if you were Clemson against UConn, there's sometimes that you come up on the wrong end. But that's why FanDuel is here to save the day because they're giving everyone Nick has no sweat bet from now until March 20th. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. That's right. You're going to get bonus bets back if your bet does it when you can even use your no sweat bet on a college basketball parlay. Whether it's a parlay or just taking one game, 12 fives, always, always a must. And even those eight, nine games, hey, why not take the Scurs over Texas A&M as a favorite in the eighth seed? So down the FanDuel Sportsbook app. If you don't already have it, by going to FanDuel.com, use the promo code ZONE. That's FanDuel.com slash ZONE. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 plus and present in Iowa. Refund issued as non-withdrawable. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. 1620 The Zone. Here's Shireman. Shireman into the corner. Mason wants the three. Bang! Mason Miller from Baylor Shireman. Back-to-back five points. Bank three-pointers. Jays by three with 90 seconds to go first half. Little transition offense, huh, Johnny? There you go. And Mason Miller scores on his first shot attempt. Ashworth trying to probe. Gets downhill. Scoop layup. No good. But Cochran in there with the offensive board and the finish. 75 to 60 and Kunkbrenner with the big board. And that might be the bucket that puts this game on ice. Under two minutes to go. Eight seconds left, seven seconds left, five seconds left. For the first time in Creighton Blue Jay history, it's four straight. Jays wins, Jays wins, Jays wins in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Your final score, Blue Jays 77, Akron zips 60 as Creighton outscores Akron 38-26 in the second half, and they're moving on to round number two. You know, Greg's done a tremendous job. they got a tremendous program. Um, I'm so happy for him. You know, I, I follow him. My family's all back in Nebraska. I think... Oregon's one, but I think Creighton's 1A. You know, there's, there's not much separation. They still love the school. 
Live from 50th and Capitol Avenue in the Big O. This is Mornings with Sharp and Handley on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and 1620The Zone TV. Now here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Hey, good to see you. Good to talk to all of you. Good Friday morning, everybody. I always uh, laugh when I hear uh, Dana's voice. It just I had to include it, man. And as he's getting older, too. That Wilbur, Nebraska <laughs> accent has yeah. never changed. Uh, good Friday morning. Welcome in, everybody. Yeah, it's a good one. For um, you. you know what? Uh, hey, it's it's a good one. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Okay. okay this is early in the morning. Uh, I don't know how you guys operate uh, when you profess your love. Like if you made the mistake, you're on your first date and you just had a slip of the tongue and you, you're like, I love you. And it's like the first date Oops. and you're like, uh, or, you know, like how long it took you to say, I love you to, uh, your respective wives. Yeah. Like if you waited, you know, like sometimes you wait for marriage. Sometimes you wait until a certain moment early in the morning when you turn to her and go, I love you. I'm not going to hesitate. You know what? I'm getting older. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have time for buildup. Oh, okay. Gary. I just want to, I want to, I want to get in. I want to get out. I want to bang it. I want to get a quickie in. I want to go. <laughs> And I, I don't want to. I don't want to like you know. You don't hold have time on to, to my words. You don't have time to cuddle. No, no, no. no. I don't think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do, but I, I, but I, but I, but I, but I for a second, I'm not sure. I love lamp, first of all, <laughs> and I love March Madness. There we go. And yep. my heart is going to be broken if the suits mess with it because yesterday was just a reminder about there is. There are certain things in this country where we can all come together. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you're blue or you're red or you're black rooting for the three division one programs in the state. Mm-hmm. March Madness brings us together. The highs, the lows, the expected, the unexpected, a whole lot of interesting. I profess it every year. I probably, you know, there's probably a little cheating quality in there because I, I do love some other things over the course of 365 days. Sure. sure. I love March Madness. Yeah. And yesterday just reminded, yeah, just reminded how all of us, like this is the thing. It, it, it is like an unbelievable event in this country, and we get another day of chaos mm-hmm. today. But what a day yesterday! We got the first upset in town. Yep, Duquesne beat yeah. BYU. That's what you get for being Mormon. They shouldn't have been a six; should have been a five. Yeah, might have been a better matchup. But Duquesne wins. The coach can't retire. <laughs> He's a cool dude. Yeah. And I just want to retire. These and, guys won't let me. And their president cancels classes today. Yeah. How come I'm not going to Duquesne? Wow. Man, if they would have done that at Nebraska, I might have had a better GPA. Kansas well, Allen did that. Well, for what was cool too is uh when I was talking to Connor at halftime of the game yesterday, they have they have the the live look in on and, and they're doing that this at all the sites with the uh, the video board of what was going on in Omaha and Pittsburgh. And there was a lot of Duquesne season ticket holders and th- yeah. that were there present. So they're actually reacting to what they're seeing while there's a timeout or Trey Alexander's bringing the ball up and you could actually see what was going on in the Duquesne game. And there would be just these random cheers throughout the arena. That was pretty cool. Oh. So they were all like really getting into that. Yeah. Well, on that point, it reminded me when you're at a game and they're showing games from elsewhere, because during the Iowa state, South Dakota state game, they were showing the tail end of Kentucky, yeah. Oakland. And, and the game on the floor in the chai was not that interesting. Right. Iowa State had opened it back up, and they were up like 17 at the time. And everybody was watching that game and reacting to it. Yeah. And there was a moment where Kentucky had got it within one. Oakland hits a three, and the place erupts. <laughs> and guys on the floor stopped. <laughs> like it, it just it happened to coincide with a foul. Yeah. There was a fight but or everybody something. on the floor huh? stopped, and they were like, "What?" And I look over uh, across from me. T.J. Otzelberger is like watching the game on the screen. <laughs> uh, but it's it's it, it is like such. There's just something about it. First of all, you may still be listening to us on your couch. You probably never got up from your couch yeah. at 11 a.m. yesterday. You said, "You know what? I'm down." And maybe at 11.22 is when the Drake-Washington State game ended up oh my God. Uh, downtown last night, which Washington State, another Drake collapse, and Washington yeah. State came back and won that game. Party in uh, the wheat fields. Uh, that was done. I mean, your day was done. I mean, we had 11.8 of midnight basketball. And then, oh, by the way, of 
You have a, you know, we need a more Jack Golke in our life. Yes. He's basically Buddy who quit with a team and with Hoosiers and then came back. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he is. That's what he looks like. He does look like him. that old. Buddy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where all of a sudden you're to watch the movie. And, and before you know it, Buddy's back on the team. We never know how he got back on the team, but he's back on the team. And he still had eligibility. He was playing last night for <laughs> Oakland in That's a major a upset of Kentucky. And then to top off the day where we had normalcy, the Creighton win over Akron looked normal. We we uh, kind of everything that we have said throughout the week leading up to away. The, yeah we we said all the week that, that kind of played out that what Creighton did yesterday looks really really familiar and yeah. and to some of their opponents could be very very scary so you had that again the expected the unexpected a whole lot of interesting and then the one story because I think the biggest story of day one will involve the ending with Kansas and Samford. Yep. Yes, Oakland upsetting Kentucky is right there. But if you missed it last night in just a wild game, Kansas was up 22 in the second half. I mean, mm-hmm. credit to KU. I, I couldn't quit KU. I, I couldn't buy in. I couldn't buy into McNeese. I couldn't buy into Samford because everybody was doing that. Yeah. And I like to be different. Um, But Kansas finds a way at the end of the game Nick Timberlake has a little bit of a breakaway, Mm -hmm. a chase down block where it was a great individual play where there was no contact, but a foul was called free throws were shot and KU survives and the world is in an uproar, except for, I like how the Samford coach handled it. Yes. What a day. What, what a day of basketball. And you know what boys? Oh, we got there's more coming up at 11 and then at five 50 today, bearing the lead. This thing is about to pop. About to burst. Uh, last night. Now I'm nervous. So I had to. Don't be nervous. Oh, embrace geez. it. Em- em- embrace it. <laughs> Twelve oh, yeah. hours. It's gonna be a long. Well, this day. is great. No, I I love the. This is the best thing about when you have to play a late game, or you have to wait for a late game for a team that you're rooting for, or a game that you're interested in. Is we got so many other distractions. So don't don't worry about it. it it'll it'll get you there. Now last night, so I had the the two screens on the Drake game, and then as that game was getting very interesting with Washington State, and then I was watching the first half of the Kansas game, but I had that the sound on that game on. This I'm not surprised that block was not called. Mm-hmm. If you're watching that game, and this is something we have talked about throughout the college basketball season, officials seeing teams for the first time or seeing a style for the first time, and... I, I'll be honest. I had not watched Sanford at all this year, but really? I heard as soon as Buckyball was brought up, I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, this will be interesting. And then I learned what Buckyball was. Not Bucky Richardson. To see this wow. whole... On, on the day that Nebraska plays Texas A&M, that's a hell of a reference. <laughs> <laughs> to see the, the constant <laughs> pressure, to know that you know Kansas had been preparing for that all week. But the way that it was officiated was extremely beneficial for Kansas. And I'm not even just talking about that call. If you watch the Jimmy, way that that game in the first half team. was officiated, it's I I look. I'm polling. I I I pull for Kansas in a lot of those occasions. Watching that first half, you felt like the other Big Twelve schools that have gone into Allen and you could no, you could just tell the officials had zero clue on how to officiate that game because the aggressive nature of which Sanford played at. They're in your face. They're in your jock the entire time. They're up at the rim. They're a lot of times doing things the right way, but it's it's a physical style. It's a it's a frantic style, and that it altitude. almost it almost seems like a lot of times officials were anticipating calls when they weren't there. And Kansas got away with some early in the game as well. So in a moment like that, where. It's an amazing defensive play. It's all ball. And Nick, Nick Timberlake just needs to stop talking because when he said, yeah, he clearly fouled me, but buddy, you're, you're lying to the oh, nation. No, I think he was being sarcastic. Okay. He, he I knew, hope he, he was. He knew what the situation He's 37 was. Years and, and, you're, and you're right about, you're right about, you know, Bucky. He said, I can see it, but I could see where they would maybe think that. I, but I think our guy just made a really good play. That is the right way of going about it. But I just think that game, the way the game was called, led up to that situation. So I wasn't surprised that there was a foul called. And then when you see that it's all ball, that it was probably not a good call because that's just how it was being called that entire game. 
All right, before we talk about what happened in Pittsburgh yesterday and what's going to happen in Memphis today, so late last night, the Drake-Washington State game got over about 11.22. Uh, if you like late-night basketball, you better sleep in on Saturday because they've announced the start times for mm-hmm. Saturday games. Creighton, Oregon is 8.40 yep. in Pittsburgh. I'm not bitching, though, because what I do is earlier, so Saturday evening. <laughs> That's Eight. a Joey problem. 8.40 is Creighton and Oregon. The games here in Omaha between Washington State and Iowa State, uh, they will play at 510. Oh, nice. And then Duquesne and Illinois will play at 740. Yep. So we have late basketball in Omaha, and then we have even later Creighton basketball coming up on Saturday night. As a opening as a five and a half point favorite, a three seed versus an 11 seed, mm-hmm. five and a half. Hmm. Be a lot of nerves yeah. tomorrow from people. Uh, there were nerves, I think, early on in the game yesterday. So I went to the games here and it was enjoyable, but it's tough to enjoy the tournament at a site. Uh, yes. If I did not have a laptop. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you've if you went on to NCAA.com this year, and I'm telling people, you know, if you were at home, you had it taken care of, but or a sports bar or whatever. But if you were like at a site, whether you were in Pittsburgh, you're going to Memphis today, or you, you were downtown, uh, you had on your phone, you were probably watching a game. But I noticed on NCAA.com that you can create your own like quad box. Mm-hmm. So they have a new thing. I think it's new called they Fast. So they have like Fast Break, yeah. where it's a whip around of the games that are going on. Mm-hmm. So I brought that up on my screen. And then I realized you can add a game. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I've got my own quad box. Good on the NCAA for doing that for people that are not like in front of a TV or watching at a sports bar. But it's cool to be at a site. But I don't know. It's tough to follow games when you have a game that either you are calling, covering, or just watching in right. person. Um, I got the feeling that's how Connor felt yesterday, too, when we were talking. It's like so, so what's going on? What, what what's going on in Omaha? What are the other games happening? And, How's and, the weather? Oh, you know why? Because the the Wi Fi was terrible in yeah, Pittsburgh. Okay, that makes more sense. But he, he even said that he, he was having fun watching that game in person, and he was sitting next to to John and Nick. But he also hinted that he was a little agitated because he couldn't see what was going on in the other games, other than the live looking on the video board, which isn't constant. Mind well, you either. I wonder if they've all so what was it? The 18 was the last time that the NCAA tournament was here in Omaha. Yeah. And they had just started to show like other games at halftime, mm-hmm. but they would they wouldn't do a ton of live look-ins. Yeah. I noticed yesterday, and maybe it was because Creighton was playing and you know, Jason Romano, who's in charge of that. Yeah. Uh, Curly. Who uh <clears throat> you know, he's in charge of that, uh, working at uh, Mecca. Um during the the Duquesne BYU game. The Creighton Akron game was on the big screen. Like the game is going on on the floor. Yeah. And up on the scoreboard is the Creighton Akron game, like during live action. Okay. So during Instead of a play. live, live okay. look in, they were just carrying the game. <laughs> so you get these odd responses because you had, you had a fair amount of Creighton season yeah. ticket holders that were in the chai yesterday. And so they're cheering. And it, it, that's an adjustment of, okay. Then you immediately look up and you go, oh, yeah. okay. You know, uh, Alexander's hit a three or something like that. It's just the odd oddness of games around the country. If you, especially if your game gets kind of like a, mm, but but there were a lot of people that were anti Kentucky. I can tell you around college basketball because I guess in Charlotte, um, it was overwhelming as Kentucky was getting beat. The oh, teams bet. that were there were going nuts. Like the well, fan played. bases, you would have thought they were actually in the arena in Pittsburgh yeah. cheering against Kentucky as Oakland was pulling off the upset. Well, I, I remember America's when. Team. When they were losing, because I I think again one of the first times they were doing the live look-ins. So when Kentucky was losing to St. Pete, mm-hmm. they were showing one of the games that uh, I was watching. Might have been Kansas playing at the same time, and they kept you you could hear things in the background, and then the announcers finally made reference. They're like, "Yes," and they are showing yeah. the 
of what is happening, as I'm sure many of you in our audience are aware of, of the potential upset that's about to take place. And so even the announcers were making notice of it, but you could hear even in the background there. So it, it's something about Kentucky, but I think it's just something about a high seed too. Well, we'll get into Kentucky because uh, you know what the fallout is. Oh yeah. Uh, Big is, blue that nation. The, is that the most pressure packed job in all of college yes. sports Yes, is being in charge of a uh, big blue uh, nation. Yeah. All right, the blue one yesterday uh, pulled away. That, again, I, that game kind of played out how I thought it was. There was a lot of familiar look to it. Um, there was the really good shooting. There was a balanced attack. And for the most part, I I knew Creighton would win. I thought Akron would cover. But let's be honest, that was pretty easy breezy offensively for Creighton yesterday. Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever they wanted, they got. Mm-hmm. The only reason that Akron stayed in the game was hitting sh- threes. And, then, Ak- and then, then Akron ran out of gas. Right. I mean, you know, we all run out of gas once in a while. I'm down to like 23 miles before I need a new tank of gas now. And I'm looking at the prices and I'm like, eh. Akron said, oh, we can't afford it. They ran out of gas coming out of the locker room. They didn't hit any shots. And all of a sudden Creighton is bang, bang, bang. And that looks like a typical Creighton game yeah. against an inferior opponent where that spurtability kicks in. They start to hit shots and it goes from eight. All of a sudden it's 15, then it's 17. And, mm-hmm. you know, na- now you got no shot. Right. Uh, and there was... There were times in that game where you're you're intrigued of the whole effort from from Akron, and and I think it's it starts in such a weird way when Enrique Freeman banks in that three pointer. And oh, they were great early shooting. They, That's the only reason they stayed in the game. And I know that that had actually that had surprised Mac, that had surprised Creighton a little bit, especially with Freeman because he's not someone that does that. But all of a sudden, they decided to play at Creighton's pace. And they were actually surviving that way. I think Creighton knew we just need to stay the course, stay the course. They had that little run there at the end to take the lead. And I think at that point, I can only imagine, and maybe we we could ask Ryan Miller later on uh, in the show. I don't think there was probably a lot of nervousness at halftime. I think they liked where that pace was. I think they just realized we're better at playing our game than they're playing our game. They won by 17 and only had one more field goal than Akron. Do, yeah. it, do what you will, analytic people, about uh, that. <laughs> so, again, Creighton and Oregon play. Creighton starts out as a five-and-a-half-point favorite in the round of 32, 840 Central Time. 940 in Pittsburgh, yeah. that game is starting on yeah. a Saturday night. I would be complaining. What about the, what about the kids that got to go to church the next day? Are mm-hmm. we not thinking about that at the NCAA? Big deal in Pittsburgh. 940 Eastern Time. I believe God atones for that uh, during March Madness. Happer told me he's going to like pound it today and then watch Nebraska. Yeah. I'm like, well, they're good that the game is late, man. He'll be able to sleep yeah. off that oh, hangover. Yeah. Sleep in, get, you can even get like a late brunch. Then you can take a nap yeah. before the game. All right. So that game's coming up on uh, Saturday. Well, he watched and... the game with John. They should watch together. Zone viewing party in Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't know. I asked him what he was doing, and all he referred to was what he was drinking. Oh. And I'm like, that's <laughs> the way to spend your time in Pittsburgh. Uh, now today is here. So at five fifty today, mm. for only the, basketball. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys make that little noise. No, and you're I'm, like, mm, oh, I'm, I'm just, no. oh no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, yeah, it's it's the mm, let's go. It's finally here. again. It's finally so, here. I'm ready to crack open a beer back. Here. Nebraska and Texas A and M play. It's the fourth time in thirty years that Nebraska has been in the NCAA tournament. Fourth time in thirty years. Long suffering fan base, but you know what about the Nebraska basketball fan base? I will tell you this. They're they, all in Memphis. They are ready to pop. Uh, it, it's, I I know we'll get we're, we'll get into the whole O for seven in the NCAA tournament, but I'm here to tell you, and it may have been you know all the events of the last week. It may have been Nebraska football hasn't been to a bowl game since '16. <laughs> Finally, we have some success in a men's sport, and there's a lot of excitement, and it's a very likable team, and the coach gets us. And we got Casey, who we will stand up for, and we will attack any cadet that tries to mock him or any guy named Solomon Washington who mocks him. He may just been having some fun. Hey, pal, it don't matter. You don't understand, as Nebraska basketball fans, what this means today because it is ready to absolutely pop. The FedEx Forum holds, what, about 18,000? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, they're... There are, I've heard from people. Devaney there, Southeast. There might be 40,000 people in FedEx Forum tonight that are rooting for Nebraska. PBA. So it, yeah. is, it is ready to pop for the first time ever. Nebraska. And, and compared to some past ones, outside of 90-91, there's 
a little bit more of a confidence level if you look at who you're playing and how you're playing. Mm-hmm. 93-94 would have been a given, but that team was out of gas after the run at Kemper Arena. 90-91, I thought they had a great shot as the highest seed they've been as a as a three seed. But there, people are ready to pop. There are so many Nebraska fans that are down in Memphis. There are so many people in this town that are Nebraska fans that at 550 today, they're either going to be in their homes, they're going to be in a sports bar, they're going to be in a sports book, they're going to be at their fish fry. Fish where, fries better where, have the game where, on. Wherever yeah. to watch this game. I mean, places will be packed today. Yeah. And all I can think of is don't do this. Don't do this. Do not do this because this fan base is ready to party like in basketball, they've never partied before. Yes. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's exciting. It's like, uh, but you know what? Just let it rip at 550 today. And we party if Nebraska parties at eight o'clock. See it. 76 second and Dodge. Yeah. The, the message board don't work anymore. <laughs> we won't be there protesting or anything. <laughs> There might be some blow horns out there, there, but stumble onto it, Beale Street. Isn't celebrate? it very fitting that this is a, a Friday night affair? Uh, you've got all day to situate yourself because I thought about this yesterday. Uh, last year during the NCAA tournament, as soon as we were off the air, ran over to sports bar, got situated, had some friends that were meeting me up there and we were there for the day. We were planted there for the day. Now the Creighton game was until later and probably very I think it was like a similar time at Nebraska's yeah. playing tonight at like right around five or six so you were you were good yesterday I thought about that if you by the time we got off the air I'm sure all the sports bars were already packed not just for the NCAA tournament but also because Creighton was getting ready to play today you've got that sweet spot where right around noon you can start making your way to wherever you're going to watch the game if you're going to a sports bar and then just Keep your ass nice and warm up until 8 o'clock because you shouldn't move at all because that's going to be the prime spot. Get there early. Get to the places early because – Also, it's chilly. You've got su- such a buildup for this thing. I- I'm, I'm 100% with you. There is, there's so much more buildup for what is about to take place tonight than what we saw yesterday at 1230. And that's nothing against Creighton. But – and I, I don't I, – honestly, Gary, I think it would be the same. Why would it be against Creighton? I don't get that. No. Why were you saying well, nothing against Creighton? Oh, as far as the buildup for the Creighton no. game. They the, did what they different were supposed pro- Different programs. I mean, different programs. I think different type of anticipation, different meaning to what this game is, uh, expectation level, all that stuff. But the, the other part about this is I, I don't honestly don't think it would matter if they were playing Texas AM. I, I feel like what this season has culminated into, it, this is just the basketball on the floor, this team, this coach. I think people are so into what they've done. Everything that transpired over the last week is what it is. It adds a little something to it. But if they were playing, say, Gonzaga or somebody else, everybody would have, I think, the same type of anticipation of no, I'd be get, upset. getting there today. I'd be upset because Edmund, Nebraska got a bad seed. Well, in the, they'd be a 12 seed. <laughs> I mean, the, com- the committee is being chaired by Trev Alberts. <laughs> They're playing Mississippi State. Yeah, there we go. Then it, it all comes, it comes back to Trev. But yeah, I, I just... You wake up today, you you sort of you process what you saw last night. Everybody will get into the game starting at 11 today. But make no mistake, here, it's it's all a buildup. There's going to be that that nervous energy, that nervous excitement. Everybody's already made their plans of what they're going to be doing today and how they're going to take in the game. And it's this is one of the things that, to me, always goes lost when Nebraska doesn't make the NCAA tournament. Because it doesn't happen often, and when it does... I love the way the state just revolves around it. Even though they might not revolve around a Tuesday night game against Purdue or a, a Saturday night game against Wisconsin. Once you get to the NCAA tournament, there's postseason. It's it's just so different. It's awesome. I love it. The fact that, yes, it's Texas A&M that adds, obviously, a, a degree to it. But here we are. And uh, I'm See, I'm okay with it. Uh, now I'm, I'm more of the Texas A&M thing. Trev isn't going to be there, by the way. He Last-minute decision, I think. Of the things that Trev has done in the last week plus, where you went, what? He's tweeting from home. He then? actually, he actually, he did something right here. Not, mm-hmm. he's not oh. going to be mm. uh, down in Memphis. So, as this happens today, and Nebraska gets ready to play Texas A and M, I, I, first of all, like of people that I'm happy for, they got a season like this. One is Kent Pavelka. Yeah. Hey, 
Mm-hmm. He is. I got. I got numerous. That's why I want him. I got numerous tonight. pictures yesterday, either via text or DM, of people that were taking selfies with KP. And so he's him and Jake are wandering around downtown Memphis. Yeah. And people <laughs> people are like taking pictures with Kent. They want to talk to Kent. Kent is everywhere. Kent's taking his own pictures <laughs> in front of barbecue places. Yeah. I, I am that. so happy for Kent. You know that Kent is the voice of Nebraska basketball forever. How much it means. Because I'll, I'll tell you a little little, little insight on, on Kent. And I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here. Oh, shocker. Cutting at the uh, Greyhound Station in downtown Omaha. Um, <laughs> so. And Kent would be. Yeah, Kent, yeah. Kent, Kent, Kent loves Nebraska. Like, and especially Nebraska basketball. Probably a couple of years ago at the tail end of the Tim Miles era in the first couple of years of Fred, it was rough on Kent because they weren't winning. There was all kinds of drama Mm -hmm. and he wasn't having any fun. Kent wasn't having fun. He liked doing the games, but in terms of like really getting into it, it just wasn't there. And then it kind of started to flip as Fred flipped the program where Kent got re-energized. And you know, I mean, Ken is no spring chicken. Right. Ken's getting up there in age. Still but, sounds great. But though. oh, he's he's one of a kind. I mean, he's he sounds he's, younger than me. He's special, and and he's a friend, and and I've known him forever, and he's he's been you know he's been very helpful in my career. I mean, I, I love me some Kent, but there was a point where you know he was like wasn't happy, and they started to win, and then they had a year like this, and I have I have not seen Kent this happy probably since when I first met him during the run in the 90s of Nebraska football where Ken is excited. Um, Man, he, he he's back to being a kid again. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many more years he has. I think he'd like to do this forever, but yeah. we know that that's probably not possible. I know one thing he'd like to do before he retires, and I don't know the logistics of this and if it will ever happen, Ken actually would like to do one football game. He wants to do one more Nebraska football game before he retires. Hmm. You know, he... He made a bad play back in the 90s to lose out on being the voice of Nebraska. Probably going back, he wouldn't have made some demands and who he was dealing with, good luck. But at the end of his career, he's been super re-energized. He's a lot of fun. Social media has been great for yeah, Kent. Yeah. But he would, he would like to do a football game. Like a football game, one more Nebraska football game before he retires. But of all the people that Is I'm ex- that I'm happy curse? for, and you know, I, I mean, I've, I've known Pat Norris, who is the equipment manager yeah. for Nebraska basketball since they were in the Devaney Center. Like, I, he was like one of the first people I ever met when I, I I went to school at Nebraska. So I'm happy for him to like possibly well experience being in the tournament, mm-hmm. but possibly what happens if they win. But like Kent has been the fabric of Nebraska basketball yeah. through all the different coaches. So I'm extremely happy for him. And I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you the second. Group, the fans. You guys know this. I'm a season ticket. You're I'm, one of them, yeah. I'm a season ticket holder. And my introduction to Nebraska basketball is they were really good. They're going to the NCAA tournament yep. back in the 90s. Same here. I was I like, I told you relatable. I was like, damn, they were just, it, you know, death taxes and Danny Nee getting us to uh, the uh, NCAA tournament. And Jimmy yeah. Williams buying me free amigos at two in the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the fan base, which has put up with a lot, like of all the fan bases in this state of the sports you cover, the Nebraska basketball fan base keeps coming back. And there's a lot of reasons to say, why are you still engaged? But the fans are so passionate, knowledgeable, and want it so bad. Like, this is also a day for them. And then the next person would be Fred. I mean, Fred was, Fred was, you know, he got a, he got a kind of lifesaver when he got hired by Nebraska. And talk about being re-energized. I mean, he was he was between jobs, didn't know what he was going to do. He gets to come to a place that he's familiar with, that he has a lot of respect for, and he kind of got re-energized. And then he also did it to himself the first three years mm. that you would be miserable. And then he did something that is not easy as you get a little bit older in your coaching life and your basketball life is he reinvented himself. He did. And he looked inside of what I have to do better and what we can do better and you've seen a flip of the culture, and you've seen the last two years, and he's a guy that gets it. And he's also a guy that has now reached a point that I think this is important with fan bases, whether you're rooting for Creighton, Omaha, or Nebraska, because us as fans, 
we put a lot into it. I mean, we put a lot of our passion. We put a lot of our funds. We put a lot of our attention. Sometimes you say, I'm done. I got to walk away. And there's a lot of times with all three schools that they give you reason to do that. Yeah. Fred gets us. Like, this is the first year. And I, I maybe I could say last year, but I wasn't Nick, paying as much attention. Like, Fred gets the Nebraska basketball fan now. He knows almost because rule is starting to become like this. You get the fans. You don't want to take everything they say, right. but you get the fans. And as the caretaker of the respective program, you feel like it's an obligation to win mm -hmm. because those fans want it so bad. You want it so bad. Yeah. The, there's nobody that wants it more than the coaches and the players, but you get that the fans want it so bad. And I think Fred this year gets that. And as they get ready to play today, I think he understands the fans and what tonight a win would mean. So those are the three that I'd be like, man, this is your day. And at 550 today, just let it rip. And if history tells us anything, eight o'clock, uh, it'll be beers of tears. Yeah. Um, but it's hey, a, one way it, or the other. We'll ride, hey, we'll ride or die hey, with this team. Hey. I mean, that's and and, 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 and and I'm already seeing this now. I was like, you know, one program in town, this is expected. They won a game in the NCAA tournament for four straight years. That's where their program is. For Nebraska, mm -hmm. this is only the fourth time in 30 years they've been in the NCAA tournament. Okay. There's just a difference yeah. and a reaction. And it's okay to feel that way. I'm telling you, the place is ready to pop. The place is absolutely ready to pop. We talk about building a statue for a guy that would win one NCAA game. What are we doing here? Yeah. But it's true. It, it's true. That's why it's a great job. I mean, you go 0 for 7, you get demoted to AAA. I, Nebraska's yeah. 0 for 7 in the NCAA tournament. They get a chance to get an eighth at bat. The Fred part of this, I, I think, is is the one that I probably spend as much time thinking about. Now, I, I'm with you on KP, and and I think everything you said, I, I the only thing I could add is I, I love him and Jake together. That was a, a, that was a pairing at first. I was really curious because I've always liked Jake Muleheisen. He's always been very good to me. There's, but sometimes when you – you might have two guys that you really like what they do. You put them together. You never know if that's going to work out or not. And – They've, you can tell they, there's a genuine appreciation for each other, even off uh, oh, what they do. It's, it's like they're, they're, they're hanging yeah. out with each other all the time. Yeah. I mean, they're, Jake, is, they're buddies. Jake has uh, made Kemp feel like a kid again. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it's, it's, it's a fun combination. And so for both of them, obviously for Kent, for a lot of the reasons you said there as well, uh, I'm excited for him. I just want him to get that first NCAA tournament call because I, I don't think there's anybody in the program that I would feel better for than Kent with what he's seen now going back to Fred and we all remember that Saturday afternoon when the news broke and that Fred was going to be the head coach at Nebraska. And you immediately allowed yourself to wonder what this program could be under a, a very respectable college basketball coach and a guy that seemed to just have a knack for being able to identify talent, both in the traditional sense of finding guys, you know, through high school and building them up and then also being able to utilize a transfer portal. And as we saw, that's kind of where things were going in college athletics period, that Fred would be really good at that. And and this would be a opportunity for Nebraska, for fans to kind of start dreaming a little bit bigger than what they currently were. And that probably wasn't necessarily fair to maybe have expectations immediately like that, but I don't think anybody held Fred necessarily accountable for the first couple of years, but we did get to a point even before the beginning of last year of, is this going to work out? There are times even last year that you entertained it. Is this going to work out with Fred? There was in December when that second half against Minnesota happens and we're kind of back to that, man, what a good start to the season. They get blown out by Creighton. Then they really get destroyed in the second half against Minnesota is this a sign of you know things to come? It, and then we're left with that question again. Is this going to work out with him? And I don't think there was one person that is either a Nebraska basketball fan or familiar with college basketball that could say they didn't want to see it work out with Fred. Because even dis despite some seasons where they were just absolute clunkers, you're at the end of the day, you're always rooting for Fred because he's that type of person. And, and it says a lot about when you finally get it going and you've built things and now you're seeing the wins, now you're seeing the fruits of that labor, how how much better you feel for a man like that than you would for just a, a, any a, 
other ordinary basketball coach. There's a reason why people are all in on this team as well. It's not just because, in my opinion, the undying support, the the loyal support that you will always get for a Nebraska basketball team, regardless of who the coach is. That thing has been amped up this year because I think people just genuinely appreciate the person Fred is. And now you're and and the person that he is as a basketball coach, but as a just a, a guy. Now you're seeing this team finally kind of hit their stride, this program hit their stride under him. It's exciting, but I think that's where a lot of the appreciation goes to because you want to see that man succeed. He demands that because of the person he is. All right, coming up, uh, the lineup brought to you by the roofers of John Higgins Weathergard. Talked to Higgy for a while yesterday. He is uh is he tan? Yeah. Uh, knees weren't hurting. I think he enjoying normal. basketball. Okay. Someone said we were we were standing because he's evaluating the officials that are here at the Omaha Regional. <laughs> Someone was talking to him and they said, Hey, I hey, you enjoy in retirement. And I said, I said, You're really retired. They don't they don't understand you have a side business, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, he's in uh he's evaluating the officials to uh see if any of the guys that are working the Omaha regional move on to the uh, next weekend do you think um, he misses it at all i asked him, i asked him that um i think this time of the year yes yeah because i said i said how how was it this year he goes oh, it was okay yeah i mean he 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 looks a little younger i'm sure but, but this time of the year like the big moments yeah because he would he would be working three straight weekends right he definitely misses it but it was good to see him yesterday uh he also uh should in person deliver the lineup for the uh, show it is brought to you by uh, John Higgins Weather Guard. Yeah. Ryan Miller from Pittsburgh uh, going to join us. Uh, Creighton assistant. After Creighton moves on to take on Oregon tomorrow. He could hang out with Connor today. Uh, he could, but I don't know. Uh, we get uh, McDermott against Altman, which I know it's supposed to be a storyline. I I don't know if it's still a thing. Just my personal opinion. You guys may, may differ, but we I get, feel good. We get Greg McDermott against Dana Altman, but most importantly, we get Creighton against Oregon. Three versus an 11 to move on to the second weekend. Creighton is a five and a half point favorite. Coach Ryan Miller will join us coming up at about 8.30. Matt Verzal stops by as well. That's the lineup brought to you by the Roof Rees of John Higgins Weather Guard. It is the day for Nebraska basketball fans. At 5.50 today, Nebraska and Texas A&M. Hammer that over, boys and girls. That's mm-hmm. what I'm telling you. Hammer that over. Line remains still at a point and a half favorite uh, for uh, Nebraska. So we'll talk about it. This is, this is the day. The place is ready to pop. Ready to pop. If Nebraska can do something they've never, ever, 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 ever done before. Why was Bo Reed trying to score, get to 1,000 points in that game in the Metrodome? <laughs> Didn't he know if they win, they get another game? Uh, 951-1620, that is the uh, hotline brought to you by the 42 Degrees, the source by your mom's house. You can always email us into the Equitable Bank inbox. Saw Doug yesterday. Did you? Doug stopped by to say hello. Doug, Doug was at the uh, games at the Chai. No hitch in the giddy up. Hips all good. Uh, I guess I, I, he came up from behind me and tapped oh, me on the shoulder. Yeah, okay. Told him to take him up on his offer for coffee at Equitable, Equitable Bank. One of was he good? Days. Was he good? Take Doug yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It was. Uh, he was uh, decked out in his Creighton gear. Yeah, of course. He was cheering during yeah. the game. Oh, but it was good. Uh, good to see him. Uh, you can uh, email us into uh, Doug's inbox. It'll come to us. It won't go to Doug. <laughs> That's the last thing you want is to be sending <laughs> emails to a sports talk radio station that actually go to Doug. No yeah. regard. Oh, he'll respond though. Yeah. Oh, he'll respond, yeah. but you may not like it. No, no. You'll be like, yeah, I know why those guys call you bad take Doug on the air. Yep. And then you're on his list. Uh, Gary at 1620 thezone.com. Handley at 1620 thezone.com. Uh, so on the uh, JTech Construction Zone Twitter feed at Gary Sharp 1620. Add Nick Handley 1620. All right. Lots of basketball to discuss, not only between uh, Creighton, Nebraska, and what happened here in uh, Omaha. If you missed it late last night, uh, second straight year, the dogs collapse and Washington State moves on. So we celebrate in wheat fields. The restaurant today. I think it would be very appropriate. Would be I would think it'd be very appropriate if, like, you had Washington State fans were maybe staying at that Marriott in the Regency area. Yeah. Walk on over. So they, so they go down the street and they have breakfast at Wheatfield. I hope they do. Tasty. Uh, we get Washington State and Iowa State. And then we get Duquesne and Illinois tomorrow here. Oregon Creighton go at 840 out in Pittsburgh, Nebraska. A chance to punch their ticket to uh, Sunday. They play at 550. So we'll discuss a lot of went on in basketball. And of course, John Calipari, you have 33 mil. Somebody at Kentucky would like to talk to you. Mm -hmm. That is the buyout for the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, who once again failed to get to the second weekend for the third straight time. We're off and running. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. (laughs) 
Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. There's no need to hunt for the prize eggs. They're waiting for you at the 42 Degrees Easter Sale. Hop on in and fill your basket with drastically reduced prices on premium cannabis, CBD, Delta, premium Kratom, American Glass up to 50% off, and disposables up to 75% off. The Easter Sale at 42 Degrees. Your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees. By your mom's house. Get more with Murphy Tractor. Each of our 29 locations offers new, used, and rental John Deere construction equipment, an extensive parts inventory, as well as other complimentary products. We also have a full team of Capstone certified technicians with field service capabilities. Let Murphy Tractor be your first choice for your construction equipment needs. Visit us online at murphytractor.com. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance. America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Hey, basketball fans. When you're in downtown Omaha for the games, remember that Cubbies is just a free throw away at 13th and Jackson. Gear up for pre-parties, tailgates, or post-game. Cubbies has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubbies Old Market. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Oddly, he's interesting because he's so uninteresting. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't settle for anyone more interesting. Let's get to work on your business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, QuickBooks and retirement planning. Call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000 and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is your home for the big game. We're in the middle of the best time of the year of basketball season with meaningful games every night with 40 TVs and massive dual projectors. The games have never looked better. Pair that with their award-winning char-buffed wings and $7.99 Monday through Friday lunch specials. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill has everything you need. 173rd and West Center Road and for takeout, 162nd and Maple. 
Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Ham. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. So the day yesterday started impressive performance by Michigan State. Uh, you know that uh, the Bart Simpson uh, meme where he's riding on the chalkboard, I will never, I will never, yeah. I will never. Never yeah. bet against Izzo. Uh, I'll bet against uh, Izzo, Mark Few in the mm-hmm. first round of the NCAA tournament, Bill Self like legendary head coaches who they may not make it to the second weekend, but they sure will win an opening round game. Michigan State was pretty impressive yesterday to kick off the uh, tournament and then leading all the way through the night where we got a little controversy in the Kansas-Sanford game. KU wins. Uh, We get late night downtown. Uh, Drake got beat by Washington State. Uh, And the uh, Washington State people will uh, eat breakfast at Wheatfields. I am told by a source... Uh, whose team is playing today, uh, that uh, there will be a wheat field location opening up in Elkhorn. Oh, Ooh, really? Mm-hmm. All right. That's closer to Gosh, me. Gosh, that, that's actually good to know because I, I was worried about the old wheat fields franchise. They had to close up a couple of shops. So I'm, gl- I'm glad to know that they're still kicking in. There's going to be another one. That's good. It's good. It's good food. Positive Friday. Yes. It's very good Went food. there many times in college. They got good potato casseroles. One of the most Nebraska things out there. You ever talk to the owner? Yeah. Inter- interesting fellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a couple of emails here in the Equitable Bank uh, inbox. Um, this is from the Lego Maniac, who I think it rides the roller coaster of uh, oh. fandom. Oh, does he ever? He would have tears of joy tonight. It's funny. A week ago, Nebraska fans and idiot Jaskers were hyped when Matt <laughs> Rule tweeted out the farmer video. <laughs> then a week later, Omaha snowflakes were losing their minds and whining about a picture of a wheat field. For the record, the emailer does not live in Omaha. Huh. We live in Omaha. We will, yeah. we will, we will protect our great city. Yes, until you tell us that we are, <laughs> we have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, he also adds, "I'd love to see Nebraska win, but my gut tells me." And this is uh, this is Zach's favorite player. It, it is. I would love to have these two together. I would too. <laughs> Podcast. Uh, I want. I want to be able to get him a jersey. He a t- rink master. He, he said, uh, "I'd love to see Nebraska win, but my gut tells me that Mast is going to get abused in the paint and on the boards, which makes Nebraska too re- reliant on making threes. Likely, we'll leave Nebraska coming up to short. Probably a seventy to sixty-five ish loss. Over under on emails you guys will get during the game if it plays. Uh, like if that. if it's going good, none. Yeah. Uh, usually, the only time I get an email during the game from Zach is, and there was a few <laughs> during the Nebraska win, rink but mass Rink Mass was not playing well. That uh, Zach will usually chime in, but typically it's during a loss. I watch him now and think of him like, oh no. You watch so Zach? Gonna, no, Rink. Oh, oh, oh. So I'm watching him because of Zach now. I'm like, mm, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. When I saw the back-to-back uh, Zach emails, I figured there was going to be at least one Rink Mass mention. 11 yeah. hours now till game time. Yep. No, he should. I, I feel like either get those two in a room together where Zach can interview Rink Mass or... I think it'd be really cool if we pool some money together and get a rink mask jersey that we could send to Zach. And he could wear that for his upcoming Nebraska viewing. I think that'd be great. I think it's a way for those guys to come together. They need to heal. They need to heal. I don't know how Rink feels about Zach, but I I definitely know how Zach feels. You know feels what? About if they it. win tonight, everyone can just be happy. Yeah. Including you know. uh, I will not be happy if I don't get thirty plus minutes out of Mass Gary, Williams, and Alec. Mm-hmm. Nebraska needs that foursome because that foursome together is one of their better defensive pairings. So they're going to have to stay out of foul trouble, and especially Juwan Gary. You know, it's going to be a physical game. Texas A&M is going to miss a lot. Now, there is one thing that I, I want to push back against about Texas A&M and their poor shooting. They actually shot the ball a little bit better in the SEC tournament from three-point range. But for the most part, they miss a lot, and they go and they rebound a lot. Mm-hmm. So blocking out will be key. 
but staying out of foul trouble. Mass Gary, Williams, and Alec need to stay on the floor. And then, as I alluded to yesterday, we love the splashy threes by Tominaga. But if he can't guard one of their guards who will either take him off the dribble or will be able to shoot over him, Mm -hmm. then I don't know how much you can have Tominaga on the floor. He stays on the floor probably more so by making a lot of splashy threes. Yeah. But Mass Gary Williams, Alec have to play a majority of the time together. I think they got to, as together, all four have to play at least 30 minutes, stay out of foul trouble, stay on the floor for the best bet for Nebraska to win. There's. Now, this is a legitimate part of, of Zach's concern that what we know Texas AM does very well in, in attacking the boards. And in the game last night, watching the, the Kansas Sanford game, the way that they, I mean, they were, they were putting up some violent misses. It was, mm-hmm. and it was kind of the style, but they were so relentless. And it didn't even matter if Hunter Dickinson was occupying the paint. I mean, they were going hard after the blocks and, and, forcing second and third opportunities and it was an for the most part an undersized team it, it's it's such a a part of this game that we've seen when nebraska has struggled the inability to just get the defensive rebound or even when they're getting a defensive rebound that it it's ping-ponging back and forth and they're finally able to maybe corral it you know that this is something that has been sort of a weak spot for Nebraska all season long. And we've talked about this part of the team of don't expect all of a sudden Nebraska to to change. Don't expect Nebraska to all of a sudden be this elite rebounding team and be able to occupy space. But there is, and, and I know Josiah Alec talked about it on Sunday. Um, Rick Mass talked about it on Sunday as well on what they're going to do in preparation for this game and emphasizing, you know, boxing out and rebounding, being one of those those major things. If if you start to feel confident, this is this is another thing. Just like anything in basketball, when it comes to shooting or anything, if you start feeling confident where you are physically in this game, though, that, that to me is is such a big part of what Nebraska yeah. could do to offset. That. Yeah, the it, mental the mental part is because Nebraska is a below average rebounding. Team. Yes, I mean, they're, they're, you, you can't run away from that. That's what they are, mm-hmm. and it's not going to change. And there are times where, like Rutgers, they're like Illinois, where they just get absolutely hammered on the glass. So there's also the part of being mentally tougher exactly. in this game. It, this, to me, this has all the makings. Like if I'm looking at it from a Texas A&M perspective, uh, I'm not paying attention to Nebraska. I'm just paying attention to the maroon and white. Texas A&M is going to win this game by 20 or going to lose this game by 20. That would be if, if we were hosting a show in College Station Day, oh. I would say. Mm-hmm. Just because of how they play yeah. and how they are playing. They're either going to win by 20 or going to lose by 20. Now, we're in Omaha, and we'll look at the matchup a little bit differently. But that's just who Texas A&M has been this year. Yeah, they have a lot of highs, they have a lot of lows, they have a lot of confusion. Some think, man, they're better than a nine seed. They played better at the end of the year. I mean, to me, this truly is a toss-up game. Um, that my my gut looks at some of the matchups and past history of Nebraska this year, not mm-hmm. NCAA. Right, and I don't like Nebraska today. I don't. I'll, I'll, I'll wait and tell you what I actually. Th- think fully yeah but the initial look on sunday when this came out wasn't well after the oh my god they did it yeah they put nebraska texas yeah. together like yeah. uh ooh, after watching their time in nashville over the last couple of days mm-hmm. <sighs> but we'll see that's why they play the game and that's why it is that's march right. uh, madness all right update with jimmy is coming up uh Next, uh, at about 8.30, Ryan Miller, assistant coach for Creighton, will join us. In Creighton, dispatches of Akron yesterday, kind of easy breezy offensively. Akron hung around for a while until they ran out of gas, especially out of the locker room. When that game, when that when Creighton went in the locker room up five after it was tied, I was like, okay, now you yeah. can start. And then they came out of the locker room, and Akron couldn't hit shots, and bang, bang, bang. We've seen it before. Creighton expanded the lead, and then it was over after that. Now they get Oregon, who handled South Carolina. And Oregon is mm-hmm. playing really, really well. That's an 840 game on Saturday night. So uh, plan accordingly uh, because uh, it will be bookended by games downtown that start at 510 with Iowa State and Washington State. Update with Jimmy coming up next. Uh, also, Matt Verzal joins us today on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio. This is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. 
from the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. The crash in Gretna on Highway 31 between Platteview and I-80 is cleared, so all the lanes are now open. Everything is smooth sailing as of right now, as there's no accidents or delays in the Omaha Metro. Just be careful of possible select spots due to the rain, and be sure to buckle up and drive safe out there. I'm Joey Colbert. Time-saving traffic is brought to you by Pyramid Roofing. If you've seen the white trucks with Rufus, the spotted dog, then you know about Pyramid Roofing. Spring's almost here. Replace your siding, windows, roof, or gutters. Call Pyramid Roofing at 402-502-9300 or visit PyramidRoof.com. Never settle for less. So with Souls Jury and Loan dealing with designer bags, what is another option that our clients have if they don't want to actually sell their item? If you're looking to borrow some money, you don't necessarily want to get rid of it. We can hold on to it for safekeeping until you're ready to come pick it back up. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircaSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. You can find pizza anywhere. But when you want pizza pie piled pie with more toppings... That's when you come to my place, Godfather's Pizza. For a limited time, get your hands on two of my large one-topping pizzas. Thick pepperoni, beef, black olives, you choose. All this food for only 30 bucks. Feed your whole mob without breaking the bank. Hey, it's an offer you can't refuse. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Did you know when you shop Salvation Army thrift stores in the metro area, you're helping people in need right here in the community. Proceeds from our thrift stores go into our metro area social services, supporting everything from food and housing programs to behavioral health and more. So stop by, get a great deal, and make a big difference for people in need. For a list of store locations, just go to salarmyomaha.org. That's salarmyomaha.org. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. He thinks bean counting is an iPhone app. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't just get your taxes done, get them managed. If you're tired of losing sleep over your business and personal taxes, you're ready to make more money, give us a call. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. Friday night is a great night for basketball, or so the song should say. Is tonight the night Nebraska ball, hoping to do to Texas A&M what the football team did to the Aggies in the 1997 Big 12 Championship, which I was at. Well, so was Gary. 54 to 15, by the way. Anywho, 550 tip for the Trev Alberts tip-off classic in Memphis. The women's version is late tomorrow night in beautiful Corvallis, Oregon. Mac versus Dana. It's happening, and it's happening at a ridiculously late time if you live in Pittsburgh. 840 here in Omaha. 9.40 in Pittsburgh, and you know how these games go. Probably closer to 10 o'clock there by the time that tips off. Perhaps the NCAA thought the game is in Eugene. 
The Fighting Flans face UNLV tomorrow night in L.A. Seven Huskers advance to the uh, wrestling championship quarterfinals in Kansas City after claiming victories in their respective second-round matches yesterday evening as Nebraska Wrestling sits currently in sixth place with 21 points, eight qualifying Husker wrestlers remain alive as both quarterfinal and consolation matches will take place beginning this morning starting at 11 a.m. at the artist formerly known as the Sprint Center. Nebraska baseball opens a series against the New Mexico State University at Haymarket Park, and due to the cold this evening, it's cold right now, the first pitch has been moved up to 4.05 this afternoon. Move it up earlier and everyone can watch basketball. Omaha softball opens up conference play with North Dakota State doubleheader today beginning at 1 o'clock game tomorrow at 1 as well. And you thought I'd forget this one. Not a chance. Omaha hockey tonight. The frozen faceoff actually later this afternoon in St. Paul against North Dakota at 4.07. Winner plays for the championship tomorrow night. The Mavs swept the Fighting Hawks a couple weeks ago. Gonzaga coach Mark Few was not pleased that the Oakland-Kentucky game was shown on the big screens hanging above the court in Salt Lake City while they were taking care of McNeese State, who failed to show up for their game yesterday evening. He got to a point where Few got very pissy and addressed it with tournament officials courtside. Mm -hmm. He said afterwards, everybody just needs to enjoy the game at hand that they paid good money to go see. It doesn't need to be like the Few house where we're flipping channels every 15 seconds and not watching the show we're supposed to be watching. I think he got a little deep there. I don't know if he was talking <laughs> about basketball. That's, that's, a, that's a Few problem. <laughs> Anyway, Oakland's upset bid caused loud reactions from fans inside what once was the Delta Center while the game was unfolding in front of them. <clears throat> At one point, McNeese Christian Shoemate was lining up to shoot a free throw when an explosion of cheers broke out yeah. because Oakland's Trey Townsend had a steal. Anytime Kentucky made a mistake or Oakland did something to hold on to its lead, the crowd got loud, and a here we go, Oakland, here we go chant even <laughs> broke out. Maybe from people in Salt Lake, they're diehard <laughs> athletics fans that just wanted to say yeah. it. <clears throat> Twice the game was turned off on the big screens to a chorus of boos. After the first time, it was put back on, but it stayed off after the second with just seconds left until Oakland pulled off the biggest upset of the tournament so far. And finally, Long Beach State's athletic director said the timing of his decision to fire coach Dan Monson was done with the hope it might trigger the exact run that led the team on its unexpected trip to the tournament. Essentially, dude is making it all about himself and taking credit for because he fired the coach. Doubling down afterwards, saying my belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired. And that's what they did. Uh, any perspective coaches at least can know, hey, you can get fired and get to the tournament. So that's a strategy that they will pull if they need to. I'm sure that'll go over well. Uh, Nebraska women play tonight. Oh, tonight. Yes. Now I've mixed up uh, my days. Creighton women play tomorrow, Creighton women tomorrow, tomorrow in, Yes, uh, Los Angeles. 9.40, I believe, tonight. Or uh, what 9.30? You, uh, 9.30, yes. So you could celebrate and then try and do it again? Live yes. from Gill Coliseum in yes. Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, the the comments by Mark Few, I was just telling my experience last night when they were showing the Kentucky-Oakland game mm -hmm. in Omaha. It's real. Uh, there was there was a moment where, was it after that three that put Oakland up four? Somebody took a timeout, and they took it off the screen while the South Dakota State-Iowa State game was going on. Yeah. And people didn't boo, <laughs> but they are like, come on, put that game back on, and they'd gone to a timeout. What so if there's they, an audible, oh. I walked across the bridge to place a bet on I'm this. A, you know what? I'm going to ask uh, Jason how that works because he's not employed by the NCAA. He's right. working for Mecca, but he can determine what games go up. Like, do they have some parameters? That's what I think. Because thought. if coaches are complaining now, yeah. you watch. There will be a memo this morning out yep. to game op officials. And the next thing you know, we will only get back to the halftime live look ins. Right. I He's, bet that's what's coming. But they were showing like the first half, uh, the Duquesne BYU game. They they showed a good like five minute stretch of the Creighton Akron game as the main not not like split screen of what was going on on the floor. But yeah, they had the whole big video board above center court of the Chai was that game, and I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. Well, and even Mac mentioned play, it in his post game. Audience. Yeah, it, it, I I wasn't sure if a lot of live action on your actual site if then they would go away from the live looking because Mac even made mention to it in his post game because someone had asked him about while fans in Omaha were probably trying to tune into what you guys were doing Duquesne fans uh it, watching your guys's game were were tuned into what was going on in Omaha did you find that interesting or something I don't know I'm paraphrasing the question and he actually 
he noticed it. He he stopped and kind of laughed about it and said, yeah, we could hear people cheering in moments of our game where there wasn't anything going on or someone was uh, committing a foul or shooting, a, you know, maybe getting ready to shoot a free throw where there was a lull in, in our action. And so I assumed that any time that they were putting the live look-ins at, uh, yesterday was during a dead period of the current game that you know the in that arena. So to hear that it was actually taking place while live action was taking place, I could understand coaches being at least a little concerned by that. I mean, it's it kind of affects it. Say that last night when when the the building exploded. Like, yeah, yeah, especially and, when you get something yeah. like that. Uh, and it was what was going on. Oh, um, Iowa State had the ball. They were up like seventeen. Yeah, and they were running a set. Now again, it it just kind of. It coincided with a whistle that had stopped the play, yeah. but every player on the floor looked around. Yeah, like is <laughs> someone streaking or something. But as I said, <laughs> I look over and Otzelberger is like staring at the screen. He's like watching the game. It's a hell of a three. I wonder if we can get that guy out of the portal. And, uh, it's thanks, funny, uh, it's true. Jimmy. Uh, Nebraska wrestling yesterday. How about Caleb Smith? Yeah, you get the Caleb Smith winning, and also you. Well, you mentioned Ridge Lovett too, which uh, that was. A big one too, but yeah, to start both rounds is gets the wins no, the and sudden Caleb, victory. Well, no, how about I know the upset for Caleb Smith? Was it? A, oh yeah, it, yeah, because I guess it, it would have been over a second seed, right? Yeah, it was fifteen over uh, two at uh, one twenty-five. Do those happen as much as they do in the basketball tournament? Uh, and they do not. They do not. Caleb had a good uh, day. Yeah. Uh, Luke Standage from Lehigh is a really good wrestler. Uh, today, the one to watch because Ridge Lovett is still alive as the number one, and uh, Jacob Van D who is wrestling in the quarterfinals against uh, a wrestler from Oregon State. So Van D is a 14 seed. That is uh, one like to watch in terms of uh, team points, but a good day for uh, Nebraska wrestling uh, yesterday. All right, here is uh, a guy that, I don't know if he's going to make it to 550. <laughs> we got we to gotta take care of his ticker. Uh, Nebraska <laughs> ball, Mike. How are we doing today? Oh, oh. gentlemen, I'm okay. okay. I'm fine. That's fine. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. First of all, Mark Few, please shut up. <laughs> wow. Mark Few, anger at 760. One of the blue blood programs in America. Relax. Welcome to what we do in the NCAA tournament every year. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah, he just got, he just, this is the first time, so he didn't understand. It is what we do. <laughs> Second of all, here's the deal. What's Vegas say? Does, does anything change? No, it hasn't changed all week. One and a half. Yep. You gonna gamble today? Hey, no, I'm not. If you give me your money, I'll put it down for you. No. Okay. Uh, Nebraska fans, remember, we weren't supposed to be here. Whoa, 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 okay? whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are not electing in Kentucky today. No matter what oh. happens. Why can't we be for a day? Our message boards are more civil than our their message boards. Take that, Big Blue Nation. <laughs> we are not Lexington, Kentucky. And thank and God I'm for so that. I'm so grateful for Tennessee <laughs> taking care of business last night. Yeah, they look pretty good. So that Nebraska would not be sitting on zero for the SEC. That made oh, me so oh, nervous. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But I am not nervous. This team... You want to talk about Rutgers in Illinois? We were up 12 twice in New Jersey. We were up 11, and Terry Shannon had to go nuts in the Big Ten Championship game. Okay? I don't care if they rebound. If we shoot, ask them if they rebound. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And Tominaga, you act like he can't move. Here's the deal. They're not going to be able to keep up with him on the other end either. Uh, I, I hope so. I, I do worry about him defensively, though, Mike. That's a that's a legit concern. They got three guards that will get downhill. One is a – Taylor is a volume shooter. But they get downhill, they got speed, and they will try and exploit Tominaga on the defensive end. But he can, stay on, the, he can stay on the floor. Team. He can stay on the floor if he's shooting well at the mm -hmm. other end. This team is not young. They have – this team has experience. They're not going to be wide-eyed. What the hell are we doing? They know what they're doing there. Yeah. You got 40 minutes. Is this the day we shocked the world? Uh, are you, is that a rhetorical question? 
We'll see. I wouldn't say shock the world. It'd be yeah. nice to just. We're gonna have some fun nine. today, man. I, hey, I, I'm I'm all in it, Mike. I, I this is whatever happens happens, right? Because we're here. Yeah. It's good life. Here we us. are. All right. What's the over? What's the over under? Not the over under, but the, the total. 140, yeah. 146 and a half. Hammer that over. That's about right. Wheel yourself on over to the casino and lay down some scratch. I have not bet on sports in a long time. I know until you got banned. Let alone <laughs> sports we're in. Yeah. So just breathe, Nebraska. Understand that, you know, we want to get this to uh, Sunday and make sure Memphis sees more of us in 40 minutes. But help this team out. And realize that this team is not a bunch of kids who don't know what they're doing. They played great all year. It's going to be a fun game. Uh-huh. I agree. Mike, uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your day leading up to uh, tonight. And feel free to just tweet away whatever happens, happens. Yeah. We'll do. All right. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Breathe, he says. Breathe. Breathe, Husker Nation. I don't know about shocking the world. I, yeah. I don't think eight nines don't usually. I don't do think that. it'll be right up there with uh, Truman Dewey <laughs> on the front <laughs> page of the <laughs> newspaper. <Believe> in miracles. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, there's. Yeah, it's, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Can we say it? It's on the maybe on a smaller scale of of what the state has been through. It's you know kind of like I mentioned the 1980 U.S. hockey team. So. The the program is over seven. I, I'm I'm not oblivious to that. Um, maybe maybe because Nebraska is not a regular in the NCAA tournament, I don't. Like I, I've seen references to it's the monkey on Nebraska's back. Yeah. Um. I, I don't, You're not I going don't there. Is, well, no, because I is really never winning a game in the NCAA tournament weighing down Nebraska. If Nebraska was there year after year, okay, like, yes. like in the nineties, yeah, in the nineties, okay, got, got in now. the nineties, it got to a point of, man, are they going to win a game because you got your hopes up? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a realist today. Okay, I'm a Catholic by nature, but today I'm going to be a realist. I'm not sure where I send my money, but I'm part of that mm-hmm. religion. Is this is the fourth time in thirty years? I get it. Nebraska is the only Power Five that hasn't won an NCAA game. And and what what happens when you win? But it, it's, I don't know. I don't know that it's weighing down the program. Now, oh, no. Now, if they no, go to the NCAA words. tournament next year and they, it's yeah. now 0 for 8 yeah, and they go again, that, that's yeah. when I could see it. But what are we talking about? Yeah, because I'll, I'll give Four you the times in 30 years. <clears throat> second time since 97, 98. I'll give you the best example of when I remember the actual phrase of the, the monkey, the proverbial monkey on the back. And that was during Tom Osborne's run between the eighties and the nineties of the big games, because they were there consistently, but they weren't winning that bowl game. That was going to get them over the top. That was going to get them the national championship, but they were consistently putting themselves in that position in that game. So that is where I do think the term is probably, it probably has more, more substance to it, more meaning to it. I, I think it's, I think it's fair to bring up, Nebraska's inconsistency of even being in the tournament. You're, you're right. If you're constantly in there, then I think it becomes more of a national storyline. If you are in the tournament, even four out of every five years, that and you still haven't won, then it becomes a major focal point. Then it becomes the the most talked about thing of, well, this, you know, every year you do the preseason capsules of all the teams. Yeah, I use capsule. But you use the... The, the, the rundown, paper. yeah, the capsule. That gets delivered to and, your and, house. and it will it, it'll start with will this be the year that they finally win an NCAA tournament team? Because the beauty of that is you're already setting the expectation that they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. So yeah. it's kind of a double edged sword. You're it, that's great to have that expectation because clearly you have now established yourself as a team in a roster that is going to going to be an NCAA tournament type team year in and year out, which is great. But then, then you have to answer for that question of not winning the NCAA. Do you think they either. really will build a statue of Hoiberg if they win tonight? Like, do you think by the time he gets back to Lincoln, be they there. will have already started the the process? They they will have already like moved. Um, you know, they they have a statue outside of Pinnacle Bank Arena. Do the Board of Regents have to approve that? Man, Lincoln and Omaha have some of the strangest statues. I, I still, 
I'm creeped out every time I walk into the child. Yeah, yeah. With what, the, the what, clown? Whatever those things are in front, which G Fed even brought up. G Fed was in our town the other day, tried to get into the chai. Did, did you stop and look and go, what is that? Well, he was like, this is creepy. Yeah. I agree. It's one like, of our like, city's founding like, fathers. Like outside of the Bob Gibson statue outside of Warner Park, yeah, are there normal sense. statues anywhere? Like you walk across, oh. I remember when I was in school, I'd walk across campus and I'd go like, what is that? Uh, Marla, and people the, are like, this is like a, oh, I, it's an unbelievable work of art. And I'm like, the Marlon Briscoe statue. It, it looks like a piece of steel. Yeah. That is rusting. You're telling me that's art? I don't get it. I'm just a radio guy. Wait, wait, which one are you talking about? The one in uh, the council, oh, in the council bus one? No, no, I'm talking, well, that one across the river. That has like the razor thing going on there. I, what is that? I've so, always asked what that Somebody is. tried to explain it to me that it's a person. I'm like, it's a person? Yeah. I'm like, you know oh my what? Gosh, covered in razors. Yeah. I, 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 I've done mushrooms in a long time, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but like, like, lay off like any statues that are normal that doesn't have to do anything with sports, like sports does the best statues. Yes, the Marlon Briscoe statue yeah, the Briscoe at the at the edge of uh, Caniglia Field, mm -hmm. the Bob Gibson statue at Warner Park, the statues down in in Lincoln. But then like, we try to do art statues. Yeah, art statues. But but you don't get us, and we don't get you. <laughs> but do you, but do you really think like if Hoiberg wins tonight, they will have a statue? They will have already moved one of the statues by Pinnacle Bank Arena mm -hmm. out of the way, or yeah. they've covered it up. They're getting ready to move oh. it. They will relocate it, and they will get the Freddy mm -hmm. uh, statue there. Do you think there's already been a rendering? Why does it have a Timberwolves jersey on already, it? Yeah. <laughs> it's got some short shorts on. Cyclones. No, is there is there a rendering already? Is this thing ready to move? Hmm. Apparently. I, I could drop a they had one right in, now. They, they had one in miles set to go in 13, 14. It was a yeah. picture of Tim on his phone. <laughs> With a big old smile yes. on his face. Tweeting at halftime. All right, 5.50 tonight. Man, it's going to be a home game in in uh, Memphis. There is There are going to be so many Nebraska fans that are going to be there. It is going to feel like a home game. And the first time that Tomonaga hits a three and does his celebration, they're going to have to call a timeout because it's going to be so loud in that building. Yep. From the other game on the video board that they're watching. It, why, would you, why would you mock KC? I don't know. I mocked him? No, you, no, no, no. No, Solomon Washington. Yeah. For Texas A&M during their shoot around yesterday, uh, was pretending like he was Tomonaga and he was yeah. mocking him. I, I may, maybe he was just having fun, I'm but sure you got to understand. No, go ahead, make a man. In uh, in uh, love and war, it doesn't matter because it's all war now between Nebraska and Texas A&M. Yep, and it would be it would be fitting. Now I would I would wait and do this maybe when you get the game in hand. Is Tomonaga still on the floor and hits a three? And he sprints by the Texas A&M bench with his celebration. Mm -hmm. The kid would be, he's already at a legendary status. Yep. The kid would be able to come back and run for, man, uh, for governor. Yes, right? he would. There's probably a little bit of restriction <laughs> on his ability maybe, to run maybe, for governor maybe. in Nebraska. There might be some obstacles he has to clear. <laughs> <laughs> Locally yeah. and nationally. And nationally, yes. But I mean, these are, these are yeah. minor details that we cross that bridge when we get there. Um, well, he's, but that's the the thing about Casey right now is he'll become Jack Golke. It, it went viral yesterday. The, the behind the back half court shot, everybody is, is tuned into him. And so you, you now do have they're, they're, this hey, national audience. They, that's also very intrigued by 30. They are an easy team to watch and root for. Yeah, they're very, yeah. very likable. Work, they have no they're, Fred Hoiberg. There's no knuckleheads. Nope. You know, there's nobody that's pouting because they're not playing. Mm -hmm. Um, they 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 are a very very likable team that also is talented. I mean that yeah. that not to you know it's a good story it's fun, but don't overlook the fact they're a good team. They're mm -hmm. they're an eight seed that that is right on par. They're an eight seed. They're a they're a good team, and that that's the other part. This isn't because uh, somebody on the stream uh, who I think is probably also a Tim Miles fan, which is fine, uh, is said Fred caught lightning in a bottle. Well. The the thirteen fourteen year was fun. It's it was exactly fun at the did. end, but that was a team that was really struggling. They were about twelve and ten, and then they caught lightning in a yes, bottle. They did. This is a team that, let's be honest, from day one, a couple of hiccups along the way, got absolutely crushed by Creighton, just beat to no other, and then went down their leg against Minnesota in the in the second half. Yep, and haven't been able to win on the road. But for the most part, this has been a good, solid team all season long. Now, there was the Wisconsin game in Madison. Mm -hmm. But they're in Maryland. Un unlike past. Yeah. That was bad. And then, then the Rutgers game. But <laughs> unlike past. Now, now I need to. Shut <laughs> no, that was just, I'll just stop. He's now. Just starting to wreck yeah. up. <laughs> but unlike past years, 
We could go on and on, and we'd be right. like that game and that game and that game, or a month stretch this, of this boy, team, they had a bad this, January. This team has been good for pretty much the whole season. Yeah, they haven't ridden the roller coaster. They're a good basketball team. So from the jump, they were good. It wasn't like all of a sudden they became good. Mm-hmm. I mean they they started strong. Yep, they finished strong. They learned lessons in the middle, but they never had well. Can Fred get out of the slump? They've lost five right. of the last six. Exactly. They, they, haven't, they haven't had that with this group. So they're different from the 13-14 team. And that's why also I think of, of all the years of the seven previous years in Nebraska been in the NCAA tournament, you would look at tonight and go, man, next to that 90-91 team, I think this is Nebraska's best chance. And I would agree with you. Yeah, I, I do too, because there's, there's a lot of different aspects of it. It, it. You mentioned, okay, those losses that we just talked about, that you didn't have a slump that you didn't have, well, that was a bad January, but they really got going in February. The ability to recover from those, a lot of those, Gary, that were, were a bad 20-minute stretch. Like, think about the Rutgers in the Minnesota game early on. They came out of the gate on the road in good shape. They had double-digit leads either going into the break or late in the first half or early in the second half, where it wasn't as if they played 40 minutes of just horrendous basketball. They had those moments, but the one thing that you could always count on is they responded in kind. Now, the way their schedule worked out, too, typically when they were coming off of one of those losses, they were coming back home. But you don't you don't respond that way. You don't avoid that type of slump unless there's something. There's a couple of things. First and foremost, you're a good basketball team. Experience, but we use the word connected a lot, too. More so than we've seen any other Fred Hoiberg team at Nebraska. There is. There, there is a connection. I heard that that word used to describe Akron yesterday from Mac. When you watch teams that maybe despite certain things that they lack, they understand that and they know how to play around those weaknesses too. I think for the most part, Nebraska just, they know who they are. You know, we can talk all we want to about the inability to be a great rebounding team, but despite all that, Nebraska typically can work around that. And it does come down to the the basic, basic simplicity of, of hitting shots. Sure. But, it's not a one trick pony. It's not like, well, if Casey's not making shots and they're screwed, yep. you know, you've got other options. So there's, there's, there's more versatility with this team that if one facet of it isn't working, that it's all, it's all gone. No, they, they can, they can hit, hurt you in different ways. And that's, I think a little bit different than what we saw, especially from that 13, 14. Yeah, Nebraska Bell, Mike, uh, he did make a good point. Nebraska, if they get a double figure lead, it's time to put the foot on the gas. Yep. That has uh, been an issue. All right, uh, in about an hour, we'll talk to uh, Ryan Miller from uh, Pittsburgh as Creighton is set to take on Oregon again. That's an 840 tip, 940 local time in Pittsburgh in the arena that is the home of the Pittsburgh Penguins who, God, just find a way into the playoffs, please, Sid. Uh, We will talk to uh, Coach Miller. We'll talk to uh, Coach Verzal. I've been asked. I did mushrooms. you got to understand, when I was 21 and I was living in Lincoln at 26th and W, yeah, and I owned a pot-bellied pig, and I was living there with seven other guys that we all turned twenty-one. He tried in the a lot span of, of about seven months, and we had two fridges. One was a beer keg fridge, uh-huh. and the other Smart. had some assortment of things that were in it. Yeah, we had cable spliced to nine different televisions. I had other. We time. all paid. Oh, we a splicer. We all paid fifty bucks a month for rent. I did a lot of things. I drank way too much. I had uh, eighteen beers one night. Oh. I, on you. I once ate two large Domino, P- Domino uh, pizza uh, larges. In one sitting? No, driving from Omaha to Fremont oh. with them sitting in the side of my car. Oh, that's awesome. And, <laughs> and not knowing what it was. <laughs> not judging. Not, not judging. Uh, I was given a mushroom. I've done it too. Oh. Same. Did in college. Oh, it was not good. No, I... It was I not good. That. I've never done it before. The only time that I have mushrooms now, if I'm hunting them... Or if I put them on uh, food. I never left my buddy's basement, though. So that was good. Smart. Yeah. Even though you thought you were on the moon. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought I was in the ocean. In the middle of an Alice in Chains video. Hey, I, I, I've, I've told this story many times. When I was 21 and I was in college, I was fat, drunk, and stupid. <laughs> Not necessarily in all in that order. <laughs> certain things After came, the pizza. Certain things came in, in different times. I get it. I get it. It happens. <laughs> Hey, n- now now I'm only two of those. <laughs> Could you still do 18 beers? Uh, I haven't tried in a long time. Very oh, come expensive on. now. No better time than the present, though. 18 bush lights with the Iowa State Dang, fans tomorrow. I, I really, really drank way too much. Like, I, I probably in one year, 
it took me the next like 15 years to drink the equivalent of what oh, I did sure, when yeah. I was 21. I always ask everyone those, did you have fun? Yeah. Mm. I, um, I mean, I, oh, at, the, come at, on. at the time I did. I, that's all that matters. Uh, it, I, I did. I did until I got a wake up call sitting in a class and there was this uh, girl that used to sit next to me. And I said, what are you doing tonight? She goes, I'm going to a party. It's going to be a great party. And I'm like, oh. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to make moves. Yeah. And I said, uh, really? She goes, oh. She goes, I've been there before. It's great. And so I was thinking like the Cherry Hut. For people that went to school in Lincoln are familiar with the Cherry Hut. Um, she was like, yeah, this is, I've been there before. It's been a, it's a great party. You should come. And I go, okay, where's it at? She gave me my address. <laughs> I'll be there. And, and honestly, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not joking here. In all honesty, that's when I was like, man, I might have an issue. <laughs> it is, that's when it crystallized, eh? <laughs> she, she gave me the address and I was like, wow, that's where I live. If I see you, hey. <laughs> all right, 35 uh, past the hour. Uh, day number two of uh, March uh, Madness. Uh, more on uh, Creighton, more on Nebraska, more on what happened here. And what may happen with the future? Drake lost last night. South Dakota State lost last night. Is Darren DeVries uh, on to a new job? He'll have options. And what does that do to South Dakota State, who may have to go search for some options after uh, losing to uh, Iowa State and what their roster is going to look like? Welcome to the wonderful world of college basketball. From year to year, you have no idea what it's going to uh, look like. That's all still to come. Uh, as we lead you up to Westwood One coverage and then uh, all the coverage coming up at 11 right here on The Zone and over on 1180. It's Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right. You have heard me talking about Lindley Clothing. Love John. John. John's a big Nebraska fan. If you go into Lindley Clothing in the Linden Market, 132nd and West Dodge, there's always great energy when you walk in the door. It's bright. They always got smiles on their face, whether it be John and Marlene, Seth, whoever is in there working, Terry. They will take care of you. They got great energy. They got great customer service, and they've got great sportswear to tailored suits to top-notch clothing for us men. They've been dressing us men for over 88 years. Your dad's probably shopped with Lindley. You shopped with Lindley. Now you take your son there. He takes his son there because his son's getting ready for graduation and prom. It's the place to go. They will find the right fit for you. I recommend it. You know what? If you want sales excellence and top-notch customer service, and maybe you're thinking, man, I have kind of a weird body. I don't have a dad bod. I have like a dad and an uncle bod. Do they have clothes for me? You know what? They do. They will find you the right fit. You know what? And if they don't have it, they will get it for you. That's what they do. They go above and beyond at Lindley to put you in the top-notch clothing from suits to jeans tailored for you. Find the best. For us men at Lindley Clothing, stop in and say hello to John today. Let's talk Nebraska basketball with John. If you stop in at 132nd and West Dodge in the Linden Market, there you'll find Lindley Clothing. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Previously on the crossover. All right, let's see. So Danville Dairy Daddies. Look at that. Look at that horny cow. Look at the eyes on this bad boy. <laughs> Is the cow giving the eyes. Uh, there, there's something weird about that. Uh, you know, I can't say. He is Never a bull. Mind. This is a dairy daddy. Oh, his name is Mick Creamy. Got it. Perfect. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show on Sportsmanlike Conduct, 6 a to 6 p, 1620. The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy skies stick around for much of the day Friday with a chance of rain and thunderstorms this morning, clearing out by 7 to 8 o'clock. Cool and breezy with a high today in Omaha, 48 degrees and northerly gusts possible up to 25 miles an hour. Becoming mostly clear to partly cloudy tonight, cold with a low of 25. Mostly cloudy to cloudy for your Saturday as well. Cool with a high of 43 and a 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic. 
from the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday morning and enjoying the March Madness as well. There's no accidents or delays in the Omaha Metro. Traffic flow seems to be smooth sailing, so you don't have to worry about being late to your destination, so no need to rush. Be careful of possible slick spots on the road as you make your morning commute, and be sure to buckle up and drive safe out there. I'm Joey Colbert. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Spring, it's the reward for surviving another winter. Fernando's, it's the reward for any day that ends in Y. Great Mexican food, awesome market margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. A day to remember. The least anticipated album tour. July 24th at the Astro Amphitheater. A day to remember with special guests. The story so far, four years strong and scowl. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. The wait is over. Don't miss a day to remember. Car repair is car repair. Most places you go can change your oil or fix your brakes. The difference is the experience you'll get at Omaha Car Care. We're part of the community. We were born here, and we believe that our relationship with you should be built to last. We're going to consult you, not sell you. We're going to give you a free loaner car. We're going to treat you like a valued friend that we want to continue to see in the years to come. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride. Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well, let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other companies send salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. Fellow Americans, former CIA officer Jason Hansen here. Market instability and soaring debt have put your retirement at risk. For protection, I recommend diversifying into physical gold from Advantage Gold, a five-star rated gold company I've used for years. Their customer service is unmatched. Call 800-741-GOLD now and say Jason Hansen sent you and get a free 2024 gold investing kit. Again, call 800-741-GOLD. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one 800 238 633. Need tires but can't get away? Or is your company fleet plagued by unscheduled downtime? Check out Jensen Mobile Express Services at JensenTireAndAuto.com. The easiest way to get new tires delivered and installed at your location. Jensen. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. So less than one percent of America has a perfect bracket. Yeah, I'm not one of them. I, I haven't. I haven't looked. I don't want to look. I don't want to. Mine was. I actually. Did, I didn't look. I. I was pretty in tune to what I had yesterday, so I know. I just don't know where I compare with like some of the people that I'm up against in like various mm. pools. Yeah, Have I, you I, seen I, the uh, work one? Apparently, uh, none of the. Oh no, that's a lie. Actually, the only zone person that is high on the standings is Mark Onwiler. Not good for Mark. He leads the entire building. Thing is fixed. Yep. He um, had Oakland. Be he probably Kentucky. changed some picks uh, during the game. Do you know who has like on uh, the celebrity level a perfect bracket? Who? Bijan Robinson. Oh, really? Bijan Robinson Luster. is sixteen and zero. Hey, the wonderful Atlanta Falcon running back. Hook him. Sixteen yeah, he, and zero. That means he got Oakland. Oh. Well, and he also uh, he followed through and he he put his alma mater as a winner uh, in Texas. Yeah, and. Colorado State. I'll I'll admit I had CSC winning. I was I was, I was rolling, rolling with I, I was I was rolling with Nico Medved and uh, let me down. 
couple updates here if you're just uh, tuning in. They've set the start time for Creighton, Oregon. It's 8.40 Central Time coming up on Saturday night in Pittsburgh. Creighton is a five-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, Ryan Miller will join us coming up at 8.30. Nebraska tonight, 5.50 in Memphis against Texas A&M, where there are now 40,000 Nebraska fans that are there. Move it to the Liberty Bowl. I don't know if they'll all get in the arena or not, yeah. but just by following on social media, like everybody, I'm in Memphis. Hey, this is where I'm going to be. Well, it sounded like they were in the arena yesterday during practice yeah. because they – and Texas A&M's band was trying to play a little bit uh, during A&M. And drowned them out. They did. They drowned them out. So it's, Good. It's, it's become personal for the people who've made the trip down to Memphis. One of the fans going to end up getting a Peabody duck and bringing it back. <laughs> hey, it, it's – I love it, though. I'm, I love it. It's the way it should I'm, be. I'm immediately going to Omaha Scanner if Nebraska basketball wins tonight. Yep. That is a good, that is a good place to follow. Good thing to follow tonight. Uh, to know if there's any activity at 72nd and Dodge. Is there anybody driving to Memphis right now? Okay, oh, the, the, yeah. Uh, Cole Stukenholtz. Uh, him and his family are right. in the uh, oh, nice. paneled van. Safe trip. You know, oh, whatever. the paneled van? Yeah, the creeper van. Is it a wood uh, panel? Yeah, and it's only got one window, and it's the circular one in the back. Oh, no. They are, uh, and there's no seats, so the kids, <laughs> the kids are sitting. I'm tired of sitting on this bucket. They're, they're, they're on milk crates. <laughs> yes, uh, they are on their uh, way to uh, Memphis. Uh, but here in town yesterday, so we had the first upset. Duquesne upsets BYU. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm serious when I say this. BYU's religious restrictions hurt them. They would have been a five seed. Yeah. Now they they were cold from the start. They almost rallied. But it was, you know, Duquesne, who they had a nice little collection of fans. Again, mm-hmm. Duquesne left Pittsburgh to come to Omaha to play. Creighton left Omaha to go to Pittsburgh to play and both won yesterday. Yep. Then you, had, then you had Illinois win, which we saw this last week up close and personal at the Big Ten tournament, is their size and length yep. is pretty impressive. Illinois is playing really, really well. They, you know, Moorhead State typical. One of those 14-3 matchups. Yeah. By the way, shout out to the 11 seeds who went 3-0 yesterday. But in those games, that 14 will hang around for a while. And it was a one-point game at halftime. And Illinois, for the most part, trailed in the first half. Mm-hmm. And then once reality kicked in, they ex- started to exploit Moorhead State, kind of like Creighton did against Akron, where yeah. you exploit them and they run out of gas and boom, 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 shot makers make shots. Illinois scary. Illinois looks really, really good. Um, we did have the Moorhead State. So Moorhead State fans really don't have a filter on what they say. Mm, really? Yeah, you probably should. You and the fam should travel to, to that part of Kentucky sometime in your should lifetime. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Hey, I might not make it back. I spent two days at Murray State. Yeah. Oh, I remember you talking about that one. I've never heard the P word yeah. yelled at people so much. And it, was, and it wasn't just in the basketball arena. You're at Walmart. Oh yeah, <laughs> I did. I had, I had to. Go, I had to go to a Walmart in Murray, Kentucky. <laughs> it was. It was probably just a, like a normal conversation too, that the P word was used. I thought, my God, where's Billy Bush? Um, <laughs> He's buying cats. So, so they're they're fans. So Terrence Shannon is shooting free throws, and and he was he was good again yesterday. Um, he's shooting free throws, and just like at the Big Ten tournament, most notably by Wisconsin. Oh. The band and the fans start this loud, no means no, yep. no means no. The Big Ten last weekend, because it's not protocol, right. went over and immediately stopped that. Yep. There was no one to stop it, and it got louder. And then, I, like the cheerleaders, like the, ma- <laughs> the male cheerleaders were like, no means no. I don't know why. <laughs> so so what, I, what I did notice is the Illinois players that were on the free throw line mm-hmm. – after the first free throw that Shannon makes, and that's kind of his personal and, you know, just F you to them. Yeah. By the way, he's not talked to the media. I was talking to uh, Paul Sullivan from the Chicago Tribune yesterday uh, who used to cover the Cubs. Mm-hmm. And I recognized him, and I'm like, hey, man, Sully, I miss you on the Cub beat. And we got talking about Terrence Shannon. So Shannon hasn't talked to the media at all. And they're wondering if they get to the Final Four, will he be forced to talk to the media? Yeah. So he hasn't talked to the media at all. But I noticed after he hit the first free throw, when this chance started at the, the CHI, the players on the blocks for Illinois walked down the floor and were yelling at the Moorhead State fans. Oh, wow. I was like, whoa. Um, and then you get to the Iowa State game where Iowa State is scary. 
And it, when they're they, clicking, yeah. they defend yeah. the heck out of you. Yep. Kudos to South Dakota State because they were down 15 3, and I thought that game was that was over. Yeah. South Dakota State found a way to get back into it, but then it just reminded you that in the Summit League, compared to the two seed like Iowa State and the way Iowa State is built, you're superior, uh, inferior athletically. Mm-hmm. Iowa State is defensively, and, and they started to make some shots, which has been their bugaboo defensively. They're really, really good. Man, I mean, they they do something. I, I, I would, I would sign up for a trip to Boston to watch Iowa State and UConn play to go to the Final yeah. Four. I've got that matchup, by the way, with UConn prevailing. I mean, they might be a more exciting Virginia. They play a, they play, <laughs> yeah, they, actually, they, actually play, can, they play stellar defense. Yeah, can actually score and though too. They score and everything seems to be a dunk. Yep, hmm. lobs at the rim. Mm-hmm. Their brand, it, yeah, it, it's. You know, you always kind of see that when you get to the tournament, that there's a certain style that you're like, wow, I like that. I, 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 that to me is something that has a chance to be extremely effective. And we've talked about that with Virginia. In fact, it was funny during one of the breaks, um, I think it was TNT was showing, they did a, like an hour documentary on, it was called The Comeback. It was when Virginia lost the first mm-hmm. year and then come back and w- win the national championship. And you forget about how offensively sound that team was when they beat Texas Tech in the national championship. And and it's kind of interesting you bring up Iowa State because you look at the way that they defend. Now, it's not a pack line defense, but they, I mean, run you off the three-point line. They're so solid inside. But they do have, they can knock down three. And that's the other thing, too. I'm I'm used to seeing when Iowa State is at its best, and shout out to, to Fred, they were just deadly beyond the arc they would kill you beyond the arc that's not necessarily this iowa state team they're just they're efficient with what they do yeah there's times that they're going to be able to knock down some threes but it's not what they're known to do so they can just yeah they kind of out athlete you and you remember with when tj was over at south dakota state too it it was just a it was a, a style that they would just basically try to put superior athletes on you and would basically formulate a system that would that would be conducive to that where they would they would out talent you and now that he's got a lot of even the bigger horses that are able to do that at Iowa State it, it's it's a fun brand to watch i started watching them a lot probably in january because you saw them on big monday a lot and you could see even then man if if they don't have any major setbacks or they're able to avoid some major injury issues that style is going to be a problem in yeah, they come at you with waves yeah. like they they in the paint uh Shooting threes, uh, Lipsy's yeah, a really I good guard. Love Lipsy, uh, they're man, they're they're a really really good team. But their defense now, you've got the Moorhead State band that's chanting "No means no." Then the next game, you got the Iowa State band that is chanting "Kill, kill, kill." Because uh, so Evan Manaya has a website that has really picked up a lot of attention this college basketball season. And he's got a kill stat. Oh, yeah, the three so defensive three stops. three straight yep. defensive stops in right. a row. And he's also got this thing about if you go on a 10-0 run during a game, how much, you know, the percentage of teams that win compared to if you give up a 10-0 run. Yeah. So Iowa nah. State has taken that up of mm-hmm. kill, kill, kill to try and get three <laughs> stops in a row. Let's get so if you're an out-of-towner and you don't know backstories, you're like, <laughs> what's going on? Where am I? The I'm, other observation okay, from, private from last night downtown, and, and it was a late night, uh, late Drake, a Washington State game got over about eleven twenty-two. Not a lot of traffic on the, uh, <laughs> on the roads at midnight. Can imagine. Uh, I was on my fourth. I green wonder, by and I and I and I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> a really good friend of mine has been uh, D Rock's assistant since he got the job at Drake. Marty Richter, who Marty was with me at FGCU during the Dunk City run, mm-hmm. and you know they they they've D Rock's has done things that they haven't done at Drake. They got a really, really good program. They recruit really, really well. They develop. It's not just Tucker DeVries and the yeah. dogs. It's they've they've got a good team. Last year they were up eight under five minutes to go against Miami. <laughs> Fell apart. Mm-hmm. Last night, thought they were in control of that game. Tucker wasn't having a great night. He only finished with fourteen, but he was better than he was against Miami, where he's one of thirteen from the floor. Um. And they lose that game. So that's two straight years that Drake has lost leads late and they're out of the NCAA tournament. And all I can think, and, you know, I mean, D Rock was pretty emotional. In the, and, and, and for people that know D Rock, Darren DeVries, 
as emotional as D-Rock gets, you could tell that that one, that one really hit him. Yeah. But it's, it's when you have the NCAA tournament and you have a run of success and you're at a mid-major program, a good mid-major program, the Missouri Valley Conference, there's always what's next because there's a lot of good power six jobs that are open. And his name is being mentioned for quite a few of them. Tucker's now finished his third year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's back-to-back player of the year in that league. You know, I don't know what he wants to do, but I wonder if you have losses to Miami and then losses to Washington State, and you are a good coach, and you just need that extra piece because you you want to win more than just one game. You'd like to get to the second weekend, yeah. but can you get to the second weekend from Drake compared to some of your other options? Is this finally the time that Darren DeVries leaves Drake and chases the not chases because he's earned it, moves a level up? But they'll come to him. Yeah, and they are. Yeah, and they are, and yeah. and they have they have before. Be a great choice, but for it's whoever. you know Drake's a good spot for him yeah. right now, but now he's almost coached his way out of Drake. So I wonder about that, and then the domino falls to another mid major program. I'm sure if the Drake job opened up, Eric Henderson at South Dakota State would be a prime candidate for the Drake job. And then what happens at South Dakota State? Because yeah. I think they're going to lose their starting five. I mean, Zeke Mayo and William Kyle the third were auditioning for power six jobs last night, right? playing for South Dakota yeah. State. Yeah. They're, they're the other three on the floor were out of eligibility. Mm. But those two guys who could come back, I mean, they're, they're, they, were, they were putting stuff on tape against Iowa State mm. to say, hey, if you have any questions, look what I did. <laughs> right, right. Is your coach looking for anyone? Huh? Well, and I think of Darren DeVries, first and foremost, uh, as – Obviously, that emotional attachment and having Tucker with him that that's going to carry you so far. And and he's Tucker's amazing. And I, I think you're right. There's it's a Drake is a good job, but what we've been talking about with maybe not the same extent as Summit League teams, but even Missouri Valley Conference teams, even ones that are are good and established the way that Drake is under Darren DeVries, you're still getting picked apart. You know, you're and you're not going to have it's it's a lot easier to to maintain one of your studs when he's your son or when he's relation some type of relationship to you and having your son there, you, you were never worried that Tucker was going to go off and play somewhere else because that just wasn't going to happen. But when you find a type of player like that, that you don't have that personal attachment to that, that's tough to keep those guys around. I mean, that's just the day and age. It is when those guys shine, you might get them for a couple of years and then that pressure to be able to win and get into that second round of the NCAA tournament. First of all, to, to win that, the conference period because more times than not it's going to be a one bid league the Missouri Valley Conference is there's a lot of that pressure to take advantage of whatever window that exists for you and then when one of those guys that you have that's a you know 25 point score if you're able to find a, another one of those guys thinking that you're going to have them for more than 2 years is probably not realistic right now and i'm sure there are coaches like Darren DeVries especially someone like Darren DeVries who has options has to be thinking about that. This is where the, the current state of college athletics, I think, does weigh in on coaches like that of, okay, I had a really good thing here. Des Moines is a great place to be. I can be successful, very happy here at Drake. They're not asking me to get to the Sweet 16, but I know I want that as a challenge in my personal life, my professional life as well. Can I do that here? Or is the system now as such to where – I might have that one player, that difference maker for no more than a year or two before I lose him to a power six school. And, and I think that's a really tough sell to keep coaches like that, like Darren DeVries in those current places wow. at mid and low majors. Yeah. And, and Drake's a little bit different because they, ha- they haven't been fleeced. Not yet. They, well, they, they haven't since he's been there. They, right. they haven't been fleeced yeah. by a uh, higher, like, like guys just leaving. Right. They've done a good You've been job. Lucky. And, and that's why I think he's been together. lucky. I think he's really been lucky there. So that's that's where I wonder. I mean, if you got to think about that, is that is that because of the culture that you've you've established there, or are you again just sort of on borrowed time when it comes to that? Yeah, before think, you know I, it, that's going to happen. I think you hit the nail on the head. In the first one, it, they have a good culture there. Mm. It's good to play for the Drake Bulldogs. I mean, it's a good program, but there does come a point where you're like, okay, what I want, I, can I get over the top? And I, I, he's going to have options. Yeah, you know. Um, Iowa JD would love to drive him to Iowa City, <laughs> but it's tough to have co-head coaches. Um, yeah, Fran's not going anywhere. But there's a couple of Big Twelve jobs. That's a great point, there's a couple though. of Big Twelve jobs that uh, D Rock is being uh, mentioned for. You know, because because Creighton's not open, mm-hmm. and you, you know, are you gonna you're not gonna stick around Drake probably for another four or five I wouldn't, years? Wouldn't think so. No. Uh, 
if Tang left just, K-State, he'd be my first call. Yeah, I mean, well, and he was and they'd be very he lucky was some but he was somebody that K-State was very interested in before they hired Tang off Scott Drew's staff a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. All right, Ryan Miller. Coming up at 8.30. Uh, Matt Verzal a little bit later. Uh, we'll get back into Nebraska and Texas A&M. Hey, silly season. NCAA tournaments going on. they got the portal season open. we got jobs Ooh, that are open. we yes. got dominoes that can fall. Not at Kentucky yet. Not dominoes at restaurants. I don't know. After two large pizzas from Fremont to Lincoln. Oof. I picture them the deep dish. Remember the deep dish they had in the mid nineties? Oh. This was uh this was just the regular. Still. Yeah, it wasn't the deep dish, wasn't the thin crust. It was That's like still impressive. The reg- it is. I mean it's, it it's impressive. But if you think about it, it's not really that hard. Uh, yeah, I mean no, wow. especially if you're I could have done you just it keep, back you know, you, yeah, keep, you, you keep one hand on the wheel, your right hand is just grabbing a slice and boom, boom, boom. At some hold. point did you reach in the box and there was nothing there? You're like, what the hell? I think I, I think I, I just did? I think I flicked the uh, empty box onto the floor and opened up the second one. <laughs> okay, then once the floor. second box was it, we're like, where did where all the pizza go? Damn. Oh yeah, I want to go no, back in time. I'll just say it. when I was that age, I didn't know what a nutritionist was, and I couldn't even <laughs> spell it. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on sixteen twenty the zone. All right, whether you are uh, betting on a big upset or a one seed. Time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. A couple of number one seeds are playing today. Could there be another upset on the horizon? Is there another Oakland over Kentucky right now? New customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins the bets for today. Looking at Auburn is lane 12 and a half. Take Yale and the points. Yale. That's 12 and a half. Also like the over in the Clemson, New Mexico game at 151 and a half. Just visit FanDuel.com. Use the promo code zone. That's FanDuel.com slash zone and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 21 plus and president. I will refund issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund five dollars unless otherwise specified restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is your home for the big game. We're in the middle of the best time of the year of basketball season with meaningful games every night with 40 TVs and massive dual projectors. The games have never looked better. Pair that with their award-winning char wings and $7.99 Monday through Friday lunch specials. Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill has everything you need. 173rd and West Center Road and for takeout, 162nd and Maple. Did you know when you shop Salvation Army thrift stores in the metro area, you're helping people in need right here in the community. Proceeds from our thrift stores go into our metro area social services, supporting everything from food and housing programs to behavioral health and more. So stop by, get a great deal, and make a big difference for people in need. For a list of store locations, just go to salarmyomaha.org. That's salarmyomaha.org. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. There's no need to hunt for the prize eggs. They're waiting for you at the 42 Degrees Easter Sale. Hop on in and fill your basket with drastically reduced prices on premium cannabis, CBD, Delta, premium Kratom, American Glass up to 50% off, and disposables up to 75% off. 
the Easter sale at 42 degrees. Your destination for top tier cannabis, second to none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 degrees by your mom's house. His voice is often mistaken for a dial tone. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. I'm still the most uninteresting man in the world. But if you're tired of losing sleep over business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, financial statements and QuickBooks, call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. So I asked earlier, uh, Nebraska plays at 550 today. Let's go. I'm a businessman. Let's go. I am making some coin. Let's go, yo. Uh, I heard, uh, like, let it fly yesterday. Oh, uh, I'm sure they like like Drake. It like, flew. like Drake tried to rent out the place, like the alumni. Yeah, Association I saw. Uh, I think Duquesne did rent yeah. out DJ's dugout. Um, we had a Des Moines personnel sighting at Let It Fly. Yesterday. Really, just random. DP. I know he's back in the area. All right. Uh, but you know, Creighton back. played at the ideal time for sports bars. Twelve thirty mm-hmm. people. Lunch. If you decided you wanted to work, uh, yep. you, you, and then you hang out, and yep, then you're like, you know lunch. what? I'll watch some more ball. Yep. Oh, time to go home. And then today. I don't know, maybe you work till noon and then you're like, hey, you know what? Let's go watch some ball. And then you're uh, you a know, state holiday today. You're a five drink lunch and it's 5 50 and Nebraska's yep. getting ready to play Texas AM. I forgot to eat. That's what I'm saying. Just settle in. Once you get wherever you go at noon, settle in. No. So I it. asked the question earlier is I, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm oblivious to this. I mean, I'm not the s- smartest guy in the world, we but I, I don't look like I, it does. I don't wake up every day going, man, Nebraska's never won a game in the NCAA tournament. And uh, was it Amy wrote a column today in the Journal Star, and she kind of said it's a monkey on Nebraska's back. Yeah, so did Tom. For, no, no, see, I if you're going every year, I get it. Mm-hmm. it it's it's something that Steve Young had. You know, you're not you're not Joe promoting Montana. like Troy Dannon didn't show up yesterday on the state capitol grounds and go, hey, Nebraska football uh, guys, hey, did you guys also know that Nebraska basketball has never? <laughs> okay, he didn't do that. Um. If they've been going every year, it, they're yeah. in the tournament for the fourth time in 30 years. I I don't see it as weighing the program down. I'm in the minority here, judging off the email interaction. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, yes, it is a big deal that Nebraska has never won because it keeps getting brought up. Okay. All right. Well, maybe, big deal may, different may, than monkey. Maybe I was a little off. Maybe, maybe why you have hope, which I think Nebraska's in a – a good spot to possibly break it, even though not not enamored with this game, is what if what if Fred Hoiberg is Mr. March? Coaching matters. Like Absolutely like, does. like Izzo. Good morning, Tom. Greg McDermott. Now consistent runs in the NCAA tournament where you get a little bit deeper. Coaching matters. Schemes, changing on the fly, how you manage short prep. Well, short prep and also games are longer. Mm-hmm. You know. I don't worry about Creighton's lack of depth because they don't foul and you've got longer TV timeouts. Lots Heck, of yeah. you go to games in person, those TV timeouts last forever. Yeah. So, but coaching, coaching really matters this time of the year. And what if, what if Nebraska has Mr. March? Fred, three times as a player, went to the NCAA tournament with Iowa State. Mm-hmm. He went there four of his five years as a head coach. Miles, really, that was kind of new to him. What if one of the differences in getting this zero off the, the board and starting to stack marches is the fact that Fred Hoiberg is Mr. March? He's no Reggie Jackson because he doesn't want to be Mr. October. Well, yeah, you don't want to be. I mean, come on. I mean, you, you, Mr. you, 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 can, Mr. Only, you can only beat Doan and Hastings so many times <laughs> in exhibitions. He would like to be Mr. March. But what if Nebraska has a Mr. March as their head coach? Yeah, because now I think back to Iowa State and every coach, you, you even mentioned Bill Self. We know there was a time when Bill Self was at Kansas when they were getting beat by the Killer Bees. Yeah, I was in school then. You know, before Never. before he became... And Kansas with him became pretty reliable in the first round. 
I want to say what was the only must be nice. they lost to UAB once, U- Iowa State. That was um, a first round exit, and mm-hmm. probably one of his last years actually. But other than that, you're usually getting a game or two. And this is the great thing about tonight. This is also a, a fun thing to now discover with Fred Hoiberg and Nebraska is if like what you're saying there, can he be a March guy? Can he be a March coach? Because you're right. We know that that coaching matters. The way that you prepare, the way that you scout, the way that you're dialed into what your team is going to be able to handle, what they're going to be up against. His record is pretty solid when it comes to that. We just haven't seen it with Nebraska. So I, I think that that's actually an aspect of this game tonight leading up to this game that hasn't been talked about at all is what is Fred's presence in this tournament, regardless of whether we're talking about when he was with Iowa State or Nebraska, is he one of those guys? Because I think a lot of people would believe before he left for the Chicago Bulls that he was one of those guys. I think a lot of people believed when he took the job for Nebraska and when he was uh, his name was being floated out for other jobs is that that was one of the qualities that he could bring to a college basketball team yeah. is being that difference maker in March. We will find out tonight, which I'm glad you brought that up because that's not getting discussed enough. Is the the Fred the Fred effect for this Nebraska team in March? All right, Ryan Miller, who uh, does not have the Fred effect, uh, assistant for uh, Creighton, will join us. Thoughts on what happened question. yesterday? Pretty thorough victory for uh, Creighton after a little early back and forth. Then reality set in, and 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 Creighton showed who they are. They move on to face Oregon, who got a forty burger from a very disgruntled former Gamecock that mm-hmm. now wears. Oregon colors. Uh, that's the matchup tomorrow night at 840. 840. Five and a half point favorites. Creighton, Coach Miller join us coming up at the bottom of the hour. Matt Verzal as well on the day that it's Nebraska's turn to go at 550 today on TNT against Texas A&M in Memphis. And, mm. I, and I hope one of the announcers, uh, I don't know if we got a Dick Fick reference yesterday <laughs> from Moorhead State. I know we did it the, on the show yesterday. Former though. assistant. Hey. <laughs> He was he was such a nice guy. Left us way too soon. Um, passed away in his fifties uh, in his sleep. Uh, he had you know he'd had he'd had some alcoholism issues. But man, he was here. He had, he was a storyteller. He was fantastic. Um, but we, if we don't we didn't get a Dick Rick reference on the Moorhead State being back in Omaha. Nope. Wow. Nope. A lot of a lot of Dane Danger. Uh, references is about yeah, it. Well, he was. He was good. Yeah, he was doing. He was doing work. He was doing Dane Danger things. Yes, he was. Uh, all right. Um, we will. Uh, and and people were telling me, yeah, Dick Fick was my neighbor. No. Uh, well, take me down to the uh, Civic <sighs> for games. Let me shoot. The, that's I, I know, cool. Oh, I, that's cool. Yeah, my brush with uh, greatness is. I know a couple of people that were Dana Altman's neighbor. Yeah. When he lived here in Omaha. Oh, they're going to say people you knew back in Wilbur. No, he's still. Hey, I his dad is his dad and the the, the family. Uh, still live in Wilbur. So much one of the Danas still got a house there. That's why I, th- I thought I heard that too. I thought I heard, yeah. Well, you get uh, you get Dana and uh, Greg McDermott going at it uh, go. tomorrow night. Just played here. All right. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on sixteen twenty the zone. All right, basketball fans, we are a day into the tournament. Maybe use tickets for less. If you were at the Creighton Akron session yesterday, maybe you use tickets for less. If you're going to the Nebraska Texas A and M session tonight, or the two sessions that were here in Omaha, the best way to get Tickets to see the NCAA tournament, whether here, Pittsburgh, or Memphis, is ticketsforless.com. You're thinking, how can I get tickets to something in Pittsburgh or Memphis? And you're telling me that Tickets for Less is your local ticket dealer right here at 145th and West Center? Yeah, they got tickets for everything. The biggest events, sports concerts, more. Tickets for Less is the place to go. Again, TFL is local, 145th and West Center. You can also give them a call today, 402-398-1999. Go, gosh, I got to get in. I want to see Iowa State and Washington State play tomorrow. Or I'm last minute. I'm going to Memphis. I need some tickets. I don't want to walk in Memphis without any tickets. Tickets for Less can get you taken care of right now. Go to the website, ticketsforless.com, or download that app. And also remember, the great thing about Tickets for Less is I found out many, many times there are no hidden fees, transparent pricing. And you know what? When you use my promo code, the zone at checkout, you'll save big at ticketsforless.com. When you're going to the biggest sporting events, the biggest concerts, the biggest shows, make sure that you're going there with ticketsforless.com. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 
1620, The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, not a whole lot of activity in the Omaha Metro with no accidents or delays reported. You can start expecting slow goings on the main streets as you make your morning drive. Otherwise, there's no worry to being late to your destination. Just be careful of possible slick spots due to the rain this morning, and be sure to buckle up and drive safe out there. I'm Joey Colbert. Time-saving traffic is brought to you by Omaha Transmission. You've probably heard about Omaha Transmission saving people money. Call Omaha Transmission and see why people have been recommending them for almost 20 years. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with buy two windows, get two free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding, now 30% off. Don't wait, this sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free, and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. While discounts apply to our regular prices, select style supply, minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanahaw. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanahaw's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanahaw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. It's time to spring into performance in a new Acura from Acura of Omaha. While they last, choose from 50 new Acuras in stock, Integras, TLXs, RDXs, and MDXs. Acura of Omaha, always open at acuraofomaha.com. Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is and has always been locally owned and operated. Now, with 160 employee owners, chances are one of us lives in your neighborhood. We take pride in taking care of you our customers, and keeping you comfortable all year round. And as always, our technicians don't have sales quotas. When other companies send salespeople, Standard Sense Qualified Technicians is just part of... Carrier, turn to the experts. It's basketball time in Omaha, and when you're downtown for the games, be sure to stop into Cubby's Old Market at 13th and Jackson. Gear up for pre-parties, tailgates, or post-game. Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade broths. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley. If you had the first introduction of uh, the new athletic director at uh, Nebraska, Troy Dan, and the football team happening on the grounds of the state capitol, congratulations, because I don't think anybody else did. So Troy Dan and his official start as athletic director of Nebraska is today. Shouldn't be a surprise that he's in Memphis. Yeah. He's taking selfies it's, with people. Yeah. He can't. He may be. He might turn out to be a fan athletic director. Like Bill Moose wanted to be a fan athletic director. They just became a fan. Trev used to be a fan athletic director mm -hmm. when he was at UNO before oh, yeah. he became very administrative. Yeah, big time. He was, he well, and he had to learn to be an administrative guy because he used to just crush officials. Oh, he'd be on the, he'd be on the scores table during basketball games. And we, I, now I didn't, I didn't have the, the balls to do this, but uh, his former associate, 
athletic director who would also handle the music would actually tell him he had to leave the scores table because he'd be pounding on the scores table in moments. Yeah. Oh, watch it. Like, someone's drink. Like, like at hockey games, he'd yeah. be up in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Like that, that, I guess, you know, sometimes it's not easy to do when you're in the power chair. He'd fall refs. to also be, he did into the locker room <laughs> one time. I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's not, I don't know. It's not that you, you kind of have to balance a, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm the representative of the university yeah. and I got to keep it on board with, I'm a fan. You know what? This is where I work. Those are my coaches. I'm going to be a fan. And Troy Dannon just initially yesterday with his interaction and some of the comments he said in the little media scrum, which geez, welcome to Nebraska. You show up in Memphis and all the people that are down covering Nebraska basketball and there's a large contingency yep. that are in Memphis. They swarm you and you're probably like, man, I know how Matt rule feels now. <laughs> right. Um, he just, he kind of comes across. He might be a, he might be just like the fan. He might be a fan athletic director, which I, I think is it, it, where he just is GBR all the time. Like every interview he does, he just finishes with GBR. So I have to be right now, at least in the moment right now, Greg, thanks for having me on sports. Nightly. GBR. Yeah, what, GBR. What should we talk about? <laughs> hey, Thanks, Bill from Beatrice calling GBR. Isn't that a testament, though, to Nebraska fans that if he's that Bill and Beatrice continues to call every friggin' show that airs in the state? Well, that just shows yeah. that just shows commitment to what he's doing. So I do applaud that. Uh that Troy Dannon, let's 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 be real for a moment here. Troy Dannon could blend in. Troy Dannon looks like for somebody that if I was in Memphis you would and I was sitting is. at a table and I was hanging out with my friends, and then Troy Dannon sat in the table right next to us, and he had a Husker sweatshirt or Husker three-quarter zip on. Whose dad is that? Yeah, I just would have thought that it's another Nebraska fan. You're yeah, like, oh, my God, Devaney's come back. <laughs> <laughs> somebody somebody did a side-by-side yeah, yesterday, there's... And, I, and I saw it, and I'm sorry I don't remember, but kudos to you. Yeah. And yeah, they're like, oh, he looks like Devaney. Yeah, it's like, oh. A younger yeah. Devaney. Yeah. <laughs> Not the older Devaney. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Where's my office? <laughs> 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 True story, got lost. When he was like the, uh, he was in the full time athletic director. Like he's like the emeritus or whatever they yeah. say. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the athletic yeah, director yeah, yeah. He emeritus. Got, he got he got lost in South State. <laughs> Many have. <laughs> oh yes, 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 yes. But, oh, yeah. but you you knew you knew who Trev was. Like oh, Trev, oh, Trev oh, stood oh, out. Oh, Trev, Trev, uh, Trev, 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 Trev's a striking individual. Tall. You, you, he's got that. He's got that real cleaned up almost politician look looks like trev, he could have played football once upon yeah, a time trev you know where he is you don't mistake him for anybody else you, you know oh yeah there's he, he looks important even if you didn't even if you're another fan you saw like, like oh that guy looks important troy dannon i think fits in with the fans so i think he might be a a, a solid fan representative a, a solid fan athletic director because he looks like one of them good point let's uh do uh yay or nay if they look like a fan okay bill Byrne. yes steve peterson no. no, he looked like somebody that's been living in the penthouse. Yeah, yes. Uh, we'll skip Tio. Uh, Sean no. Eichhorst. No, he could have lived with Steve. Bill Peterson. Moose. I think Bill did. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think Bill did. And then Trev. Just, Trev, no. Just because you yeah, Trev, a former yeah. college and NFL football player, so he looks a little and bit a, different. And a former TV guy, so he yeah. he presents himself in a TV way. So I I I think. It's ex- kind of expected that he's supposed to, not supposed to, but would run part of the job. You got to look like, a- yeah, it wasn't like, wow, this is a commitment to the yeah. job. He shows up and now he's in Memphis. Well, yeah. the guy is like probably going to be in heaven of what the, that job is of like all the attention you get. He's taking pictures with people. Mm-hmm. Yes, he, he, roll in he, basketball shirt. he was just in Seattle. People probably didn't know who he was in most places. He, I comes, know. To, he comes to Lincoln and he's going to find out quickly. He's one Everyb- of us. Everybody knows your name. And everybody wants a piece of you, mm-hmm. but he might be a fan athletic director. And maybe in the meantime, that's kind of what Nebraska needs. I agree. All right. Uh, next Ryan, selfie. Ryan Miller is going to join us here in a little bit from uh, Pittsburgh Creighton assistant as uh, Creighton got past sometimes the toughest game. That first game with a little bit of the unknown and the buildup to the opening day of the NCAA tournament. They're on to uh, Oregon. What challenges does Oregon, a red hot team that, ran through the Pac-12 tournament and then ran through South Carolina yesterday, especially in the second half, uh, what that matchup will be like. We'll talk to Coach Miller coming up in a little bit. Matt Verzal a little bit later. It's mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right, maybe maybe your equipment and your bracket are both busted. Now, you can figure out why your bracket is busted. You just don't know basketball. And plus, it's the beauty of March Madness. You've got upsets galore. But what about 
your equipment being broken? What about your mental acuity is not there? You know what? You can't focus on 40 minutes of basketball, let alone a minute of your life. Your attention span, stress, the focus issues are off. You can't even do the simplest tasks. And you're wondering, okay, what's wrong with me? Well, men, we all get to this point and we ask the hard questions of what can I do to make myself better? Is it something that is holding me back? Well, it may be simply low T. And that's where mentality comes in with their FDA approved testosterone treatment that can take care of you. They've got board certified physicians that will work with you. You're figuring out, why do I have low libido? This is the best time of the year. I should be going mad. Okay. I should be, I should be celebrating. I should be like splashing a three, splashing here and there. And your spouse and partner are like, nope, I want you to shoot an air ball. And you're like, no, no, no. We've been pretty good from long distance for so long. Why aren't my shots going in? Again, that is a symptom of low T, low testosterone. Mentality will help you. They're board certified physicians. That first physical, they're going to give you an exam, consultation. They're going to walk through the blood panel, what it says on your very first visit. And then they're going to help you get back on the path to where you're draining a corner pocket three. So be the best for your family and yourself and get more energy and a better attitude so you can enjoy what's coming up later today and later in life. Go to Mentality. LowTUSA.com is their website. Let Mentality take care of us men today that have low T. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. And 1620TheZone.com. The Connor Happer Show. Basketball is better than football. It's time to finally admit it to ourselves. This state has brainwashed you for years and years and years. Football this, football this. We have to talk about all these football topics. Who's going to be the fourth string running back this year? I'll never know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. You ever notice how we're so happy right now and we haven't talked about football in weeks, Josh? Weeks. The Connor Happer Show. Weekdays from 10 to 2 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy skies stick around for much of the day Friday with a chance of rain and thunderstorms this morning, clearing out by 7 to 8 o'clock. Cool and breezy with a high today in Omaha of 48 degrees and northerly gusts possible up to 25 miles an hour. Becoming mostly clear to partly cloudy tonight, cold with a low of 25. Mostly cloudy to cloudy for your Saturday as well. Cool with a high of 43 and a 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, not a whole lot of activity in the Omaha Metro with no accidents or delays reported. You can start expecting slow goings on the main streets as you make your morning drive. Otherwise, there's no worry to being late to your destination. Just be careful of possible slick spots due to the rain this morning and be sure to buckle up and drive safe out there. I'm Joey Colbert. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's, great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ, more wags, more fun. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. If you have a large amount of gold or precious metals and want the best price with no waiting, Sol's makes it easy and fast. Any amount of gold, silver, or jewelry, no limit, immediate payment. Sol's Jewelry and Loan. 
The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircaSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks jnm displays wants you help shoot an omaha storm chasers game memorial park display or any of the major shows in western iowa and all of nebraska if you like to travel jnm covers nebraska kansas and most of missouri they offer free training and great daily pay rates which makes it a perfect part-time job visit jnm displays.com and click the join our team tab to find out more jnm fireworks When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well, let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other companies send salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. Oddly, he's interesting because he's so uninteresting. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi. I'm Bob Berger. Don't settle for anyone more interesting. Let's get to work on your business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, QuickBooks and retirement planning. Call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlin on 1620 The Zone. Creighton yesterday, they take care of business against Akron in the opening game of the NCAA Regional out in Pittsburgh. And now they have to wait a little bit. It's the late game against Oregon coming up at 940 Pittsburgh time, 840 right here in Omaha and right here on the zone between Creighton and Oregon. And we welcome in Creighton assistant Ryan Miller. Uh, First of all, congratulations. Uh, Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us, Coach. Oh, no problem. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Not much sleep this time of year. (laughs) Right back at it, trying to uh, prepare for the Oregon Ducks. Hey, how much of a, regardless of opponent, how much of it is a relief to get through that first game where there's a buildup, there's the unknown, some guys are new to that (laughs) stage. How much of it is a relief just to walk off the floor, of course, with a victory to go, okay, we got the first one out of the way. Uh, We have five more to play. Yeah, I mean, you know, to get to your second game, you have to win your first. So, um, yeah, so obviously anytime you can get out there and compete and uh, come away with a victory in an NCAA tournament, uh, it's huge because it's all about surviving, surviving and advancing, right? So whether it's first game, second game, you can go out there and compete, try to find a way to win until you get to game six. Were you surprised at all, Coach, that Akron was willing to – play at the pace with you guys in that first half. I know they hit shots early and, and it was successful for a little bit, but did that surprise you guys at all that they were, they were willing to, to go at that pace? I think, uh, you know, their ability to make shots early obviously uh, took us a little bit off guard, but, um, you know, through the course of a 40 minute game uh, with that pace and the way the game was being played, we thought our chances of winning at halftime were pretty, pretty strong. The, what was the discussion at halftime? Because a nice little burst at the end of the first half, got a five-point lead, game is still tight, Akron feels good, you feel good. What was the discussion like in the locker room to come out and right away what go 9 of 13, Akron goes a little bit cold and got a nice comfortable lead? What was halftime like? Yep, we thought we left some points on the board uh, also in the first half by turning the ball over. Um, it was just keep the pace going, keep the tempo going. Uh, be a little more crisp with their passing and our decision making. Be a little stronger with the basketball against their pressure. And over the course of the game, over the next twenty minutes, we thought we'd be able to 
mm-hmm. to stretch the lead out and hold on to the lead. Uh, we kind of took the foot off the gas a little bit about six, seven minute mark, tried it with the possession game. But, uh, yeah, after we got up to about the 20 point lead, um, you know, we, we felt pretty good control of the game. Well, and kind of with that too, coach, you're, you're tuned into how your players are communicating both on the floor and at halftime as well. When we see these March upsets, there were things in that first half that Akron was doing where you could look at any other team and say, "Uh oh, this could be problematic. Keep your eye on this. But then you look at what Creighton has between the coaching staff and between the players that have experienced this already, experienced this tournament. How big is that, in your opinion? Those guys that what they've been through, going through kind of what Gary asked too, going through maybe the, the, yeah. those first twenty minutes there. No, well, like Gary said, I mean, like the NCAA experience is no other event like it. Um, you kind of have to go through uh, it before you kind of uh, can experience what it's like. Uh, the stage, how big the stage is, uh, how big every possession is. Um, like last year, we lost by one point and there's a possession during that course of 40 minutes that yeah. decided the outcome of the game, not necessarily the last play of the game, right? So every possession matters. Uh, we knew they probably, they're not, they, Akron wasn't a three point shooting team. We know they probably were going to attack. Cause that's if you look at upsets like Oakland, Kentucky last night, I think they made Oakland made 15 threes, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of upsets for lower seed teams beat, uh, or higher seed teams beat lower seed teams is because they make a lot of three point shots. So they came out and they, they you know, they let it fly a little bit. Um, you know, second half, we took, kind of took them off the line a little more. I don't know how many threes I think they ended up with. They had five at halftime, I know. Um, so I think a big part of it is making sure uh, those three-point contests in the second half were a little bit more difficult. Um, they weren't able to tee some shots up. And then, you know, just play our game, play out to up-tempo. Um, and like you said, we have a lot of experienced guys, a lot of experienced coaches. I mean, Coach Max has been here and then to the tournament many, many years mm-hmm. and staff. You know, I've coached many NCAA tournament games, and then obviously the players of being in those stage is quintessential to success. I mean, <laughs> in this time of year, yeah. because like I said, it's just a, every possession matters, the magnitude of the media, everything that goes into, um, you know, you get the, you got this big microscope on you and a big uh, magnifying lens on you, and, and every moment matters. Hey, one one quick thing, and this is just, I have a question because when you're watching the games at home, it probably doesn't hit you. But when you're involved in the games or you're watching the game in the arena, man, those TV timeouts are lengthy. They're a lot mm-hmm. longer than they are in the regular season. So if you're wondering about, man, those guys don't have depth, you're like, well, they're going to get extended breaks. How do, how do you manage the extended time uh, in terms of a timeline and even a longer halftime that you get in the NCAA tournament compared to the regular season? Yeah, it gets uh, it actually lots of us, uh, you know, you know, so secret we don't have a big bench or we haven't utilized the bench much all year. Um, but uh, it allows those guys to get a little extra rest and then allows us, you know, the first 30 seconds or so of the timeout, you know, we'll huddle as coaches and it allows us to really compose our thoughts because we have enough time to uh, compose our thoughts, talk about what's going on offensively and defensively in the huddle, then Mac or whoever goes and takes to the, to the huddle in the timeout. So those 30 seconds, especially for a team like us, where we scheme and a lot of things, we make a lot of adjustments. Adjustments, I think it's uh, it's helpful for us. And obviously, this halftime too, the same kind of deal. Like a little extra time, the more rest we can get our guys off their feet, um, the more we can huddle and try to scheme at what's going on out there and try to make adjustments uh, is, is to our benefit. It probably wasn't a big surprise, and I got to assume that it was a big part of the game plan, given what Akron uh, had. Uh, maybe better yet, what Akron was giving up inside size-wise, even though Enrique Freeman is a, a solid player, plays a lot bigger than six seven. Kalk was huge, and it just seemed like from the get-go, Coach, the ball was going to continue. He was going to continue to get his paint touches, but especially when you guys end the first half strong and really pick up from where you left off in the second half, how big was just his overall presence in that matchup yesterday, especially establishing what you guys were trying to do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's no secret what we would do both offensively and defensively. Start with Kalk Um Defensively, we're going to funnel, we're going to move people p- pieces in off uh, their offensive parts to to Kalk Brenner. That's our our goal. How it's done changes from game to game. And then offensively, we want to establish paint touches first, then let it spray out for threes. So we want to work inside out on offense, and so we do that with Kalk Brenner. And then defensively. You want to take people off the outside mm-hmm. arc and push them down to Kelk Brenner. So mm-hmm. he is such an uh, integral piece and puzzle to to what we do schematically, schematically during the course of a basketball game and, and how we prepare for teams. 
Boy, he is, uh, when you get to this time of the year, his game goes up another level, and you would think, how can it? He plays at such a high <laughs> level. But when you get when you get into the NCAA tournament, um, 11 uh, shows up. Ryan Miller, assistant coach for Creighton, joining us. Creighton, Oregon go the late game, 840 Central Time, 940 East Coast Time on Saturday night against Oregon. So now, because you don't get to sleep a lot, I don't think you sleep very much anyhow. So you got us, You guys are already a little bit ahead of knowing, okay, we got South Carolina, Oregon, if we take care of business. So you've already started that pre-prep. Walk us through once it's official that Oregon beats South Carolina. What happens next as you break down this Ducks team and your initial thoughts after you saw them either in person or you've seen plenty of them on tape? Yep, as a staff, uh, we watched the first half, left the second half, and uh, just started to get our, our thoughts together, our notes together. And immediately after the game, when we knew our opponent, we huddled, we met as a staff. We go, we went over, number one, to play the Ducks after going over them. And we've seen Dean Alden's teams for a while. And I've coached against him. He's been coaching a long time ago, whether it was a UNLV or some other stops. And Coach Max coached that against them. So, and we kind of know what they, they, they they're, they're, Team already, but we start putting that, get together all their offensive steps. How are we going to take away certain things they like to do? We take a look at all their personnel, who does what, um, and how can we, you know, take a look at their weaknesses and take them to our benefit and look at their strengths and try to take those strengths away from them. And so, and then the biggest thing for us, uh, because their defense is so unique, is preparing for their matchup zone. Uh, most makes and most free throws. They go back in this one-two-two two press back into a matchup. Um, we're really going to have they're very creative out of it. Um, you know, it's a true matchup where they're really the zone, but they're matching up with uh, guys in their area. So we're going to be creative what we do, and we're going to be really uh, we're going to have to have cutting and movement at a high high level to to have a, a lot of offensive success on Saturday night. What can you, can you talk a little bit more about the the challenge of the quick turnaround when you're you are scouting a team, whether it's Oregon or anyone else, the yeah. week that you have to prepare for an NCAA tournament game, as opposed to the quick turnaround, that fine line of getting the information, being able to put it on a scouting report, being able to work at it through a practice and a shoot around. But also, is there a sense coach to also kind of thread that needle when it comes to not overwhelming, maybe putting too much of the information out there. So you're not bogged down with that in the, in the, the quick turnaround. Yeah, I think there's there's uh, some merit to that. Uh, making sure we're not information overloading. Right. Uh, making sure we take a lot of the stuff that they do really well, and we try to take it away, and just three or four things there, and some of the weaknesses they have, and try to expose those. Um, you know, the one the one reason I think Dana has a lot of their his coach teams have a lot of success in the postseason is because that matchup zone is is a hard one day prep uh, to go against. And uh, when you're in an NCAA tournament. Um, and you haven't seen it all year. You know, we've seen some aspects of a matchup, like the Paul ran it because mm -hmm. a solo field coach for, but it's not like what Oregon done with their length and their athleticism. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a challenge for us, but uh, you, you're exactly right. We don't want any information overload them. We want to give them three or four things that they can utilize on the court and then go try to execute it better tonight. Hey, for a guy that uh, has a little involvement in uh, Let It Fly, you know how important it is to have the TVs in the right spot in sports bars so people can have a viewing experience. <laughs> Let's be honest here. When you're in the NCAA tournament and maybe you're in one of those long timeouts or something's going on and they're showing games from around the country. Uh, I know where you're going with it. There's no question. I'm in the timeout. I look up there. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? What the heck is going on around here? There's no question about it. I'm a, it, it, it's right there for you. And it, it, well, we're playing in Pittsburgh, so the Canes in Pittsburgh. So, right. I mean, there was a time during the course of the game, there's like loud cheers last night. Yeah. And the game's going on. And because they're playing the Kane game. Uh, that was happening in Omaha on the scoreboard while we were playing. And everyone's like, what the heck is going on? And then you look up and they, of course, they got the game game on, on the TV screen or the, you know, <laughs> scoreboards up here. But yeah, no, I get caught watching that. I remember a couple of years ago, Kentucky got upset by somebody. St. Peter's, Fort yeah. Worth when we were playing in Fort Worth. Yeah, St. Peter's. Yeah. And they were showing that game on the scoreboard in Fort Worth. And like, you couldn't help but catch it. <laughs> during the game. Like, you had to snap yourself back. Say, hey, we got to win this game. Do that Kentucky game up there. <laughs> is, is that something that's talked about amongst the coaches? Is it, is it annoying? Is it just, it is, it's, it is what it is? Or like, how do you guys react annoying. to that? Uh, it was annoying. Yes, I will say that. <laughs> um, you know, because there's no action going on. We we're, you know, like right. said, being out there, but there's ball movement and stuff. Nothing crazy. The crowd starts cheering or they start 
booing or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going on? So you, you naturally, you're like, what's going on? Yeah. So you get yourself caught and you have to refocus yourself. You say, okay, you got to eliminate that distraction that's going on. Yeah. But it, it, it can be, it can, it can be a distraction a little bit. Yes. Hey, congratulations on the victory. I know uh, it's just the start of the uh, journey and uh, have fun the rest of the day, uh, putting prep together and uh, with back with the uh, fellows in uh, practice. And then uh, good luck tomorrow night, coach. <clears throat> I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. That's, Thank uh, you. Ryan Miller, uh, part of the uh, deep and experienced and talented uh, Mac staff, uh, as Creighton gets ready to take on uh, Oregon uh, tomorrow night at 840 uh, Omaha time. Is So that's a storyline, by the way. I hate the TVs are the good the, dude. The, yeah, it, good guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, no, you gotta. He was real with you us. gotta have you, you. You gotta know. He's got knowledge. I mean, yeah. he he knows where where people need their TVs. <laughs> uh, they want to watch other sports. That's right. That's right. Um, uh, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to downplay this because there's two guys that have you know the last two head coaches of uh, Creighton basketball, and they're they're both really good people. Uh, outside of you know what they do for a living, mm. um, they're both kind of characters. I just now every time I hear Dana's voice, I just laugh. Because all I hear is Schick and Nick. <laughs> um, Especially Nick. <laughs> um, you know, hey, look at Mac. We hear Mac's voice almost every day. He's, uh, you know, yeah. got his, uh, doing his spots. Um, is is the Dana Mac Creighton thing st- still a thing? A thing, sure. So, uh, so but I, not. I, I don't, I know we do around here because like we, got, we got to know thing, Dana or? and Dana had great success. Yeah. But Mac is the best coach that. Creighton basketball has ever had. Agreed, yeah. And, and the numbers will tell you. And I will, you know, and, and we know this because it's been put on our timelines after the whole Trev thing of the awkwardness of Texas A&M of the flirtation with Arkansas and then coming back. And, right. you know, the, at the end of the tenure, it wasn't so good. But I'm so happy that Dana has gone to Eugene and he's had great success. He's got five Sweet 16s. He's got the 2017 Final Four. People forget uh, He's that. got eight NCAA trips. I mean, it's also been 14 years, guys. Yes, it has. I mean, max has been the head coach here for 14 years. Dana's been in Eugene for 14 years. It. I, I hope the national broadcast just doesn't beat that thing into the ground. We all acknowledge Dana used to be the head coach at Creighton. Yeah. Then Mac is the head coach at Creighton. You know they, they both will, They both like each other. Dana. Dana still. Dana's from Nebraska. Dana still comes back to yes, Wilbur. A, a lot. I mean, I, I was. I saw him in the airport right before Christmas. We were coming back from California. Hey, there's. Coach Altman is picking up his bags. You'll see Kevin at, McKenna on this on the yeah, on the bench as well. Yeah. So I mean, we love him, but I don't know if you kind of you associate Mac more with Creighton than Dana, in my opinion. Especially Big yeah. East Creighton. Yeah, and that's a good point, Jimmy. I, I think we we remember the Missouri Valley Conference, the, the great battles that Creighton would have with Wichita State, would have with Southern Illinois, would have with you and I, all, all of those those fun times in the Missouri Valley Conference and what Dana Altman represented for Creighton. I just I go by my emotion when I saw the brackets revealed on Sunday, and the Oregon name pops up. Obviously, your mind goes there of oh, interesting. If Oregon wins and Creighton likely wins, you get that matchup. And it didn't, at least for me, didn't register any more than a huh. So I think it's still a thing, but I it, I was more intrigued by hell, I was kind of more intrigued by TJ Otzelberger and and South Dakota State matchup, or the fact that you could get an Iowa State Drake uh matchup if that were to have happened. Unfortunately, it didn't for Drake. There were other storylines, obviously the Nebraska Texas AM one. There were other storylines for me that I think have more of a that moved the needle a little bit more. Now, if this was, I don't know, I, I'd say maybe even 10 years into Mac being at Creighton or less, sure, that would be something because it's more fresh on people's mind. But you're right. You've associated Dana with the success in his brand at Oregon now, I think, anyway, at least my age, people my age, I think would would agree with this. And, and what I'm gathering from you, Gary, as well, is that, we associate him more with Oregon that it's, it's an interesting footnote. Maybe it's nothing more than a footnote though. It, and you're right. It'll be discussed a lot, but as far as Creighton fans, I don't even think they talk more about it than, Oh yeah, it's 
Eh, we, we usually wish Dana luck. Obviously, we hope he doesn't have good luck tonight against us. But I don't think it's, oh, boy, this is awkward. This is weird. Oh, I don't like this. Or, yeah, let's stick it to Dana. Yeah, we got we got to win this one because you cannot lose. Can't no, end I, the season I, I, losing I, to Dana. I, I get the opposite. I mean, Dana's in the, the Hall of Fame. Um, is I I get this is March Dana, and he's scary. That would be the only he, part of it, though. He's scary, and that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm I'm sensing a little bit is, man, he's got him playing well. That that the way they're playing at this time of the year, yeah. conference tournament aside, where Dana is, you know, money is he's he's the guy, he's the guy, and this looks very familiar. But I mean, it's been 14 years. It has. I mean, the the guy that's in place has been in the NCAA tournament uh, nine times. Not taking anything away, but I, I'm just saying, is it? Is it still a thing? Mm. Now, why I know it would not be a thing is, what if Dana, in his wanting the Nebraska job, not not when he was in Eugene, but when he was at Creighton, would that have changed things? And would Dana still be at Nebraska if he would have been right after Danny Nee or uh, right after Barry Collier? Yeah, and I think we know the answer. I think that would have changed things. Because then you're talking about in-state rivalries, that happening year in and year out. Oh, yeah. Uh, that that changes it a little bit. You go to Oregon, you don't have to worry about them or even interact, cross paths with Oregon for that long. Where yeah, it, that's that's a lot easier to accept and move on as opposed to if he was at Nebraska for however many years. It definitely will not be as uncomfortable as it was the first time that the, that Dana coached against Creighton. That now, was extremely uncomfortable. Wasn't that in the? Was it CBI? The, the CBI, yeah. Yeah. And they played was, in order. Yeah. And yeah. then you had the weird call on the, the backcourt violation. Yeah. Because you couldn't see it because of that court. Yeah, that was strange. And it was, yeah, because what was that? Three or four years removed? It was pretty early. Yeah, it's just it, a, a lot of things have happened. It, it, you know, Jimmy brings up, I think, what maybe one of the key points. Creighton's Creighton's got a, a a completely different brand. It's a different it, Creighton. It, it's it's Max face on that brand of Big East Creighton. There's been a lot of success with that brand again associated to Mac on that. And Oregon, hey, they've had their success there with Dana, which I think the majority of Creighton fans are appreciative of it. In the rare occasion that those two cross paths, and this one is interesting because it is actually to possibly eliminate the other season. But enough time has passed where I don't think you feel that animosity of I, I think you're right of the one part about Dana Altman right now that is on Creighton people's minds is that that's the next opponent and they saw the way that they played yesterday and they know how Dana can coach in the That'll postseason. But as far as the Dana factor of he used to be the Creighton coach, I, I think enough time has passed where that's not the the issue. That's not the story. The Big 12 still had 12 teams back then. Yeah, a lot has um, changed. Well, two guys, two guys in their 14 years at their respective school have done really, really well. Mm-hmm. One's made the Final Four. The other is on a run of making the Sweet 16. Yep. And was that close to making the Final Four before, too. But we, we have discussed a lot about the end of Dana's tenure at Creighton, where it felt, after the flirtation, it felt like it was, it was time. Mm-hmm. It was time. And I think Dana probably realized that as, as well. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's in the Hall of Fame and, they, you know, the doors open whenever he wants to come back. Um, but just that's it'll be, you know, just there's Dane Altman and there's Greg yep. McDermott. Yep. And I want to hear Dana talk. <laughs> is that a and Wilbur the, accent or a, is that that's a Wilbur accent? That's so that's so if you that go to is, Wilbur, any other place in Nebraska, you're not gonna get that accent. You go to Wilbur and all of a sudden everyone talks like Dana. Don't <laughs> be popular. He told me that uh whenever he when he was back in the Omaha area, um, he gets stopped all the time. And he should. He should. He's he looks exactly yeah. the same he, he did say, the, the he day that age. he left. I mean, he yeah. He, he, he's sixty five years old for he, people who he, don't realize. He introduced Creighton basketball to the rest of the country, mm-hmm. and Greg McDermott introduced Creighton basketball to the possibilities of what they can do. Yeah, that's. I yeah. think that's a that's Tie a perfect way nicely. to put it. Um, all right, uh, mm-hmm. quick break. Uh, Matt Verzal coming up in the uh, next uh, hour. Uh, again, if you missed out late last night uh, when they started to put out the start times for. Saturday games here in Omaha. You get Iowa State and Washington State. Uh, going to play at five ten at seven forty is Illinois Duquesne, and then at eight forty is Creighton and Oregon. Do we know what our coverage is like for that, Nick? Uh, so we are having for myself. Aren't you doing the show? <clears throat> yeah, 
I don't get much information. I Jimmy's going to be on the air at six. <laughs> yes, we're going uh, to, by the way, Jimmy, I, I guess now is as good a time as any to tell you we're doing a three hour pregame show because <sighs> it, because it's Dana. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's hey, Dana. <laughs> hey, speaking of three hour uh, post uh, pregame or post game, uh, Nebraska basketball wins today. We could we could just cut into NCAA tournament coverage here on the zone and we could go three hours. Big red yep. overreaction. That's true. That's yep. what we'll call it. Yeah. Um, Boy ball reaction. Uh, it should be. If they win. All right. So what time are we on the air tomorrow? Uh, 8, yes. 10, 8 10 officially okay. on the air. Now, pregame uh, coverage would be an hour shoot around. So 7 o'clock. Well, that sounds nice. That is sounds when that happens. Dinner so, with Joey. Yeah, and then 8 10 is when we will go out to Pittsburgh with Wait John and Nick. Are, are you doing the show? Yeah. Oh, okay. But Joey will be here. Oh, with you. okay. I yeah. was going to say. Yeah. Joey's doing a pregame mm-hmm. show on this yeah. one. I've been bumped. And it's for uh, everybody uh, wondering which uh, station uh, the women's game will be on uh, tomorrow, we are working on that. In fact, as soon as I'm off the air, we have a we have a discussion about that. So. One one nine. We'll keep, we'll keep you posted, Rob. On that uh, so so Glenn, who is you know kind of in charge of all the media stuff yep. and running around and uh, doing a good job, Glenn Sisk, uh, who is involved with women's basketball at Creighton, uh, Rob Sims. Got sent out to yes. uh, Los Angeles. So he's he, going to be doing the play-by-play. He'll be doing play-by-play, and you know what else he's doing? He's their SID representative. Going yeah. back to the old days of yeah. when it was the, the two Robs. Yeah, they're a little, little, little stretched uh, yeah. with all the yeah, personnel because they, they got people in Pittsburgh, they got people in Los Angeles. Oh, by the way, we got baseball. Yeah, at had, a baseball early, yeah. had baseball earlier this week, too, at home yeah. while they're getting ready for that. So yeah, yeah, you should tell people it's like going sweet. On. Just mess with them. <laughs> at the meltdown. Yeah. I heard uh, Spicoli and Megan are doing the game, too. Yeah. All right. It's uh, mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Don't let stains around your floor drain become a pain in the drain. Burton AC Heating, Plumbing, and more is here to help make sure your showers, sink, toilets, and all drains are cleared and flowing strong. Our prices won't drain your wallet either. Just call Burton today to open your drains for $93. For a limited time, buy a new sump pump and get $100 off a battery backup. Don't let rain invade your domain. Burton's experts are at your service 24-7. Just call Burton today at justcallburton.com or call 402-934-7003. Restrictions apply. Call for details. A day to remember. The least anticipated album tour. July 24th at the Astro Amphitheater. A day to remember with special guests. The story so far, four years strong and scowl. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. The wait is over. Don't miss a day to remember. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit postcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. 
Hey, basketball fans. When you're in downtown Omaha for the games, remember that Cubbies is just a free throw away at 13th and Jackson. Gear up for pre-parties, tailgates, or post-game. Cubbies has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right, I have a little history made today. Nebraska basketball at 550 against Texas A&M, trying to win their first ever NCAA tournament game. You've got Omaha hockey, which has been on a uh, heater. They are in Minneapolis, or actually in St. Paul, at the XL Energy Center. Uh, and the NCHC uh, frozen, frozen face-off. Face off. Uh, they've been great against North Dakota this year. They take on North Dakota at, at four. North Dakota has been, they were good against Miami of Ohio. Now, Miami of Ohio yeah. is off and oh, they fired bad. the coach. Yeah, they're bad. Uh, and they steamrolled them over the weekend. Uh, so today there could be some history made. That's you could have uh, some history with the uh, crimson and black and then the uh, scarlet and uh, cream. Let's do and that. And, and that's and, on TV. And both places, yes, both places CBS will Sports. have a lot of local fans. There'll be a lot of people up in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. That's on CBS Sports Network, also on 1290. Yep. And then you have, of course, Nebraska basketball, where people are just coming out of the woodwork right now telling us they're in Memphis. Yes. I love this. This reminds me of my Liberty Bowl trip because everybody was there for that. Well, so. is this like is so, this like rivaling the, like so the, the Boulder Colorado takeover? I, I want to go. I, I think it's going to be very similar. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's kind of odd because you have the pocket of fans. They get the tickets that are closest to the floor, and then yeah. the rest of everybody else fills in. Right. Uh, you'll have your pocket of Texas A&M fans. And then, look it. You don't think Houston fans are going to cheer for Nebraska? Oh, hell yeah, they are. Oh, they hate the Aggies and Longhorns. Yeah. Hate the Aggies, and who do you think they'd probably rather face yeah. right now? They also, probably feel like they, they almost lost to Texas A&M. They have colors this like us. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, they're, they're going to be it'll be a pro-Nebraska crowd there, too. Cougar high yeah. for Nebraska. It's, I it just started hearing... More about the the presence of Nebraska fans yesterday, and I, think I the just the truck will go. Got so excited because that that's awesome for these players. And uh, this is again where I, I I'm not worried about the moment being too big, given the type of guys that they they've shown to be this year, and having that type of support. It, look, if you can, we know how this team has reacted when they've had a lot of their own cheering for them. Now the majority of that has been at the home arena, Pinnacle Bank Arena. But if you can turn that into a home environment, like it seems that Nebraska has done so, hey, that bodes well. We, we, like, we, like, a home, we like home team Nebraska. And if home team Nebraska is going to be wearing the whites today, can act accordingly, it could be a really fun night. Yep. Uh, first time Nebraska has been wearing uh, white in a while in the NCAA uh, tournament. Mm -hmm. First time the rest have been in the NCAA tournament eh, in a, in a, it's a, been decade. a decade. Nine hours now. All right, one more hour to go. Uh, Matt Verzal is uh, coming up next. Uh, enjoy the uh, basketball. Don't forget at halftime of the Nebraska Texas A&M game, we'll have a uh, cut in. Yes. Right here on 1620. And then uh, tomorrow, Creighton and uh, Oregon. Safe travels. We'll see you in Memphis, enjoy everybody. Enjoy it. Uh, another hour of Mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy to come next. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center, there's an injury crash causing delays at 180th and Center. There's fog in some parts of the Omaha Metro, so be careful of low visibility. Also possible slick spots due to the rain, but everything is smooth sailing, so no rush to get to your destination. Hope you have a fantastic weekend and enjoy the March Madness. Be sure to buckle up and drive safe out there. I'm Joey Colbert. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Lawrence and Gardens. Experience Brick Live. Brickosaurs now open at Lawrence and Gardens. Come face to face with a herd of incredible brick built dinosaurs. Discover prehistoric plants and honor the ton of fun. To plan your family's dynamite adventure, visit LawrenceandGardens.org. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. 
We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding. Now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Hello, America. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you don't have Consumer Cellular yet, now is the perfect time to switch and save. For a limited time, new customers can get wireless service for as low as $15 a month for your first year. Yep, the same exact nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for $15 a month for an entire year. What are you waiting for? Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com and use code RADIO15. See ConsumerCellular.com slash FIRSTYEAR15 for promotional details. You can find pizza anywhere. But when you want pizza pie piled high with more toppings, that's when you come to my place, Godfather's Pizza. For limited time, get your hands on two of my large one-topping pizzas. Get pepperoni, beef, black olives, you choose. All this food for only 30 bucks. Feed your whole mob without breaking the bank. Hey, it's an offer you can't refuse. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries. 192nd and Center. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Right, one more hour to go here on your Friday before we get you fully set for another fun day of college basketball, which you'll hear right here on 1620 The Zone, also on 1180 The Zone. As Gary mentioned, too, we've got hockey for you on 1290 with Omaha taking on North Dakota in the frozen faceoff. Uh, that is the they played in the early game, the 430 game with uh, pregame coverage starting at four o'clock. Like on that one too. I'll so, watch. well, my only, my Support only, my beloved drum people. That... My, my only beef is if that was the seven o'clock game and more likely to be a seven thirty game because usually those the late game doesn't start on time. You could get the Husker basketball game in, then you could watch hockey. Like I'm be interrupted by watching hockey, and then all of a sudden basketball coming on. Right, now. you can have multiple TVs, you, but you, you're going to lock in you can on do one. That. Yeah, you yeah, it. yeah. It's just that's just how it's going to be. But and especially uh, you. Yeah, exactly. You'll be pacing in the Hanley basement. I've got a lot of rooting interests going on today. Um, so, yes, everything gets started. We have the pregame coverage of the Westwood one. Uh, college basketball coverage starting right, right here as we get off. on 1620 of the zone. With that guy. Love that dude. I'd like to talk with that guy. Uh, and, oh, by the way, you know, you, know what, you know what else starts on Sunday? Spring football. 
That's happening too. In Omaha, Nebraska, we made it till 908. Yeah. And a four hour show that started at six before spring football just, was even mentioned. I'm just Think mentioning it. Yeah, I'm just mentioning the it. The host of the show's gone. Yeah. And we just mentioned spring football. Yeah, I'm just mentioning it. That's all. I might mention it to Matt Verzel, who joins us in about 10 minutes from now. But no, I went to Pison yesterday. They had basketball on all the TVs there. So, he... Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Nice. Were they packed? I bet they were packed. Yeah, it was yeah. delicious. Oh, they had one table. That must have been about a stack of 40 boxes. So, yeah, they were. Somebody had a big takeout order. Nice. Or they were going to eat it driving from here to Fremont, eat the whole box. So, I... yeah, this is, a, this is a, a day that when the bracket came out on Sunday, knowing, and, and my, my whole wish was that Creighton would have their own day and Nebraska would have its own day. Although in 2013 or 2014, when Nebraska and Creighton played back to back because they were in the same location and would have actually played each other had Nebraska done their parts. That was an epic, epic blank show. So I've been told. Oh my gosh. And my uh my my previous job, and we were on in the afternoons, doing a show while everybody around us was reacting to the Nebraska game. And then I think we were on the air when the Creighton game was taking place. Watching everyone's sobriety continue to diminish by the minute, not by the hour, but by the minute at the place we were doing the game at, which uh, unfortunately no longer exists. Oh, it was it was a sight to behold. So there is always that. But I, I get the feeling, and this is, again, the etiquette or more guidance to the day. If you are one of those unfortunate souls that are working like you, myself, like Gary, who's now jumping on a plane. Gary, by the way, represents, I think, our last wave of fans in the state of Nebraska that are making their way out to Memphis. Whether you're you're driving through the night or really early this morning to get there for tip off, or you're catching like the literally like the last flight to get out there so you can make it on time. If you were if you had to work like us or are working today. It's the beauty of being able to take the lunch break. You stretch the lunch break. You start maybe sending out feelers of what's going on in the office. Has, uh, you know, is, is the boss, is he, is he still there? He's gone? Okay, cool. And then you just you, you, you stretch that lunch break until before you know it, it's, it's happy hour. Before you know it, it's the weekend and you didn't return because I guarantee you're not alone. But I'm telling you, if you're going to watch the game today, tonight, at a sports bar, I think you would best be served if you are in your seats no later than 1 o'clock. Because you might get a little you're bit of an for opening. for the Nebraska game? Yep. Because I think I you, like might, that. You, you might get a little bit of an hammered. opening of the lunch crowd that's going to go to various sports bars. They're going to watch games and then... Unfortunately, they might have some other responsibilities, so they'll leave, maybe go back to work, or they might have some adult responsibilities with their family that they have to tend to. So then you might get a little bit of an opening. But if you are not in your seat where you want to watch the game by 1, 1.30, you're I saying if you go at 5, you you're screwed. Up. Oh, yeah, 5 o'clock. <laughs> so you got to think differently is what you're saying. Yeah, I hell, know what hell, you're Jimmy, saying. even, I'm four, used to even this. 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, you're screwed. 4 o'clock, you're screwed. Because you know what? There can't be anything more annoying for sports bars and sports bar owners on a day like this when people call up and be like, hey, is there any way we could reserve a table? Now, how much you asking? Hey, okay, it might cost you, but that's got to be the most annoying thing. I, I'm assuming there's probably a blanket policy of, no, we're not reserving tables for anybody because you you got you to figure it out. You got to make your way here. Hey, as long as that sports bar doesn't have a giant buffalo with wings with a large ass knocking people it's through boxing windows. Up. Yeah. One of the better commercials, the box out. Yeah, that one's great. That dude could play the five. Yes. That is I that Kids, com- that commercial is basically what Shaq was like in his prime. Like you just throw dudes. I it's we were talking about this yesterday that the Buffalo Wild Wings would probably have a new uh March Madness specific commercial with the Buffalo, and they did, and it did not disappoint. It was very, very good. Why would anyone sit next to him at a bar? You're near a pistol and he knocks you on the ground. Well, look, you're you're sitting next to a buffalo. Oh, we're getting some more um, Memphis uh, people 
on the tips. way? Uh, well, some tips now. This one from John on the Equitable Bank inbox. He says, if all those people in Memphis end up having a day to kill tomorrow, they should try out Young Avenue Dell. It is actually a bar, not a Dell. They have great food and tons of beer on tap. Try the fried pickles. It is located just west of the Liberty Bowl. The drive or Uber will be worth it. Okay. Yeah, you, gonna, you, now, you, you went to Memphis, Uber, right? Yeah. The Liberty Bowl is not close to the. Are you familiar with uh, the Young Avenue Dell at all? I don't remember eating much that okay. day. No, that's a lie. I had pizza for breakfast. Yeah. Um, so the answer is no. But uh, hey, if you want to talk about the ducks at the Peabody Hotel, I'm your guy. <laughs> I wanted to bring a duck home. I'm, I got overruled. I'm so I, I was really excited to hear about when Sip was talking. That's and, who I want to see at the Peabody. Well, when when Sip and Gary were talking about the different sites around their hotel, and that it was also not that elevator. far from one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies of all time, doesn't probably get its due propers is The Firm, when he joined that that corrupt Memphis law firm. That there are actual places in Memphis because, as we know, that that's where the movie was shot. That you could go visit. So yeah, I would I would be able to make a real solid weekend out of being in Memphis. I sure. liked it. It was worth the COVID. I didn't blame Memphis. I blamed our fans. <laughs> you, that's right. You're a part of the Liberty Bowl. When that was a super spreader. When you're at a bar and people are shouting at you so you can hear them, you, you kind of forget, like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. I'll text you. But, hey, I enjoyed the extra week off from work. So. The, li- the Liberty Bowl super spreader event. Yeah. People forget. Best sleep I ever had. Yep. Ne- never forget. Yeah. Shout out Dan for covering. <laughs> um. So today the action gets underway and this is where you start to plot. Okay. Where could we possibly see the next major upset? Cause I think we can all agree without question. It was Oakland over Kentucky. And, and that's the, the big story, which it's great for Oakland. And typically when you have these upsets, the team that got upset, it's not usually a conversation that leads to, the future of that individual, and in this case, John Calipari, or that basketball program. But holy hell, last night, just because I was very, very curious, uh, the Kentucky sites, like the 24-7 site and the rival site. Entertaining. In the post-game immediate reaction, rapid reaction videos that were going out. (laughs) I've worked in that world, so I kind of have an idea. Yeah, I mean, working it, the Kansas basketball fun. Uh, coverage and fan base is not too far away from the Kentucky, the Big no. Blue Nation. Yeah, and, and so they can tell you, they can tell you, oh, we're not. Yes, you are. You're yeah, not, you're not as bad, but you're. Yeah, if they would have lost last night, it would have just been. And now it's house money. Uh, by the way, if you're making your way out to Memphis, that's the very first, or I'm sorry, the second game of the day. The second game of the day is Colgate-Baylor. Toothpaste. That is at 1140. And I don't I don't look at that one as, I, I actually, and maybe it's more personal and more selfish reasons, I have Baylor going to the Sweet 16. I don't look at that game, the Colgate-Baylor game, as one that, Worries me too much. Uh, Baylor, by the way, is a 14 and a half point spread. Hey, those are the upsets that end up happening, though. Well, they do. Uh, but then you're you're followed with a I lot of interesting that. ones. UAB, San Diego State, and that's a 12-5. Ooh, my Aztecs. Uh, also, you've got Western Kentucky Marquette. What's the effectiveness of Tyler Kolick going to be? I don't think they struggle with Western Kentucky in this particular matchup. That number, again, is 14 and a half. Then you get a chance to see what a lot of people have at the very least in their final four, if not their national champion, UConn taking on Stetson. That's at 145. Still not getting to anything that I love. Yale Auburn. Now, if you heard me during the fan duel spot, I'm not saying I'm taking Auburn to get straight up upset, but I am putting Yale with the 12 and a half they're getting. That's one that I'm actually oddly interested in. Because I think I've seen Auburn on their best days, and they're, they're, they're no joke. It's just something about an Ivy League team, though. They're smart. And in, in this situation. They know math. Yeah, they do. Which is why I could never go to an Ivy League school. They are a 12.5-point dog against Auburn. And that one is out in the 
East region. I'll in roll Spokane. With Yale. Bulldogs. Are you gonna take My them straight? Dog, you, you taking them straight up or just uh, to cover? Uh, just to cover. Yeah, I'm not that bold. The uh, the the puppy did pick Yale to win straight up. Yeah. Well, like I said, got to roll the bulldogs. I said Reese has Longwood in the uh, in the final four, so that didn't go well. But um, uh, you've got Colorado, Florida, then Vermont, Duke, Vermont, Duke. Mm. Again, I I don't know Vermont. People think of the Syracuse game twenty years ago. By the way, if you can believe it, it's been yeah. that long. Yeah, it won't happen tonight. There's there is something about there's something about this Duke team that I don't know leaves me flat. But, but in that's this everybody particular in game, college basketball this year. There, it, you right. can find that about everybody. I don't know. Charleston, Alabama, I think is interesting. There's potential there. Then you've got another 12-5, James Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Grand Canyon, St. Mary's also. That's the late one, and that's another popular 12 over 5 pick. Uh, Longwood plays Houston at 820. I know Reese is rooting for Longwood, but he'll be in bed by then, so he won't be able to root them on. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Houston's going to do just fine that one. Although that number, 23 and a half, yeah. uh, it wouldn't shock me if we get a backdoor cover there by Longwood. Maybe that's what you're rooting for if you're if you're Longwood. And Purdue, by the way, is favored 27 and a half against Grambling. So there's there's some of the numbers right there. I don't know. I, I might be proven wrong on this one, but I, I love Yale getting the 12 and a half against Auburn. I'm going to talk to Vers here in Purdue a second. cover. That's that's a lot of points, man. Yeah, they're not gonna cover. Is, they're gonna win. They're not gonna do it again. That is a lot of points. I don't know if they're gonna get past the weekend, but uh, let's take a quick call before we go to Vers. We got Sam joining us. Good morning, Sam. How are Sam's you? Sam's got me nervous. Hey, hey guys. Yeah, um, I, I called in uh, earlier this year, and I think you both were on. I, Gary was out, and I I just said, hey, if there was a team that you thought we, you were, just go out and win. And Nebraska went and did that. Mm-hmm. I have always been a big Nebraska basketball fan. I've always been my first love by in in all of sports, and so uh, it's always you know you always have that nervousness. Yeah. Oddly enough, Texas A and M with this team, Texas A and M is going to have to go out and earn it with Nebraska. There's no doubt about that. I think this team is mature, mm-hmm. ready, and poised for this moment. And I don't think that the 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 you know the the lights are going to be too bright for Nebraska. I think that Nebraska will come out and pop A and M in the mouth. I think okay. that they will come out and give every single bit of what they have. And if that is the case, if that if that is the case, Nebraska. And I say this being you know somewhat cynical Nebraska fan. Nebraska on their best game, Nebraska plays like a top fifteen, top twenty team. They do. They have the they have the personnel to do so. So I'm not necessarily nervous about today. It's weird. Okay. I, I just am not. I, I, I actually think Nebraska will come out and make Texas A&M earn it. And if, it, and if, they, if Texas A&M wins, they, they, they played a damn good basketball game. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for today, and I think everybody should just have a, have a little bit of a sigh of relief because this team is mature, and I think that they will – they're ready for the spotlight. They're you're ready. saying sit back and enjoy the ride. Exactly. Now he's got right? me excited. Exactly. They're, yeah, they're 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 gonna they're they, you know they, they they got old guys. You know they got Bryce Williams who mm-hmm. is cool, calm, and collected. They have Fred Hoiberg who you know is cool, calm, and collected. They are just they they they're a team, and I I'm I'm looking forward to what is uh, actually about three fifty my time and five fifty your time. Um, to, to watching Nebraska get that first win. And like I said, they're, they, they play like a, like a top 15, top 20 team. You know, Torvik and Ken, Ken Palm have them, yeah. have them about that actually right now. So um, just sit back, enjoy the ride, and, and, and watch. Frank Mass actually probably puts up 18 and 11. Ooh. Bryce Williams probably, probably 16 and 4 and 3. And then Casey probably is 15. And, okay. and you get that out of them. You're, you're smooth sailing and Juwan Gary with like eight and eight and 12 or something like that. I'm not going like to lie. It. I feel better about like life it. after this. I like it. I like the confidence, yeah, Sam. Sam and, and I like the, I like the advice on how to handle the day. Enjoy yeah. the game, my man. Thanks. That's, that's, that's good advice for all of us. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of nervous energy, but I, th- I think it's, I, I do think it's 
more kind of what Sam had said. I think it's more excitement. He said two hours different, so maybe he's calling from Elkhorn. <laughs> yeah, out of that West Coast time zone. All right, uh, we are going to talk to Matt Verzal coming up next. I want to get his thoughts. New AD in place. Uh, also, so we got spring ball starting on Sunday too. Well, we're going to talk to Verz Second about that. Nine twenty. I know, I know. Get, Basketball re- state. Get ready for it on the other side of the break too. As Verz joins us next. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, weekdays six to ten on sixteen twenty the zone and sixteen twenty the zone dot com. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Women's college basketball audience on Fox is larger than the men. Wow. Because of her. Because of her. Women's basketball is up 48% on Fox, 60% across all national networks. They say the viewership peaked at 4.4 million viewers. If that was a men's game, those are extraordinary regular yeah. season basketball yeah. numbers. But people love their Caitlin yeah. Clark. Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Cloudy skies stick around for much of the day Friday with a chance of rain and thunderstorms this morning, clearing out by 7 to 8 o'clock. Cool and breezy with a high today in Omaha, 48 degrees and northerly gusts possible up to 25 miles an hour. Becoming mostly clear to partly cloudy tonight, cold with a low of 25. Mostly cloudy to cloudy for your Saturday as well. Cool with a high of 43 and a 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KETV Newswatch 7. At Sid Dillon Chevrolet, we want you to have the best car buying experience possible. Shop Nebraska's number one volume Chevy dealer group or at SidDillonChevy.com. Together, let's drive. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. There's no need to hunt for the prize eggs. They're waiting for you at the 42 Degrees Easter Sale. Hop on in and fill your basket with drastically reduced prices on premium cannabis, CBD, Delta, premium Kratom, American Glass up to 50% off, and disposables up to 75% off. The Easter Sale at 42 Degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. He thinks bean counting is an iPhone app. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't just get your taxes done, get them managed. If you're tired of losing sleep over your business and personal taxes, you're ready to make more money, give us a call. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything, like jewelry, gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loan's on almost everything. Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. It's not that he's he hustles any less, but on a day like this, I know the hustle is real with our next guest, Matt Verzal, who joins us. Verz, how's it going, my man? Oh, good boys. How you doing? Good, good. How was the how was the crowd yesterday? Nah, it's a bribe day. People bribe people to stay in the office. <laughs> so it was a lot of lot a lot of karaoke. 
All right, so I, I do want the advice from you. If you are to get a good seat for the Nebraska game at 5 or 5.30, I guess is what it is. Uh, when, do they, when do they need to be at Pisons today? Um, you know, Nebraska hasn't been in it since we've been over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would say probably 4.30. Okay. All right. We probably a good guess. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah. I, I was telling people they needed to be in the, their destination by like one thirty or two because I think it's going to be a blank show today. Yeah, I I well, I would guess there's going to be a lot of people that are called out of the office. The <laughs> sports bar thing isn't really our deal. Yeah, but that's not. I didn't want to be that. I know we have a boatload of TVs, but I don't need fantasy football guy in here yelling at TVs <laughs> the whole afternoon. I don't find any part of that enjoyable. <laughs> So we just like to have people come in and sit down and watch. And All right. I will probably not have the sound on because I had the sound on last time in the championship game and they lost. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do your part. Do your part because you're not you're not going to be in Memphis. And obviously we understand why. But I, I'm hearing all these stories of people just overtaking Memphis. And it made me think, and I know you've got your your big opening day trip coming up to Chicago. But I could I can only imagine – if Matt Verzal's running around Memphis getting ready for any Nebraska event that you would do it the right way, right? Oh yeah. It would be fun. I mean, it's, you kind of got to get a feel for Memphis. I know there's some much like anywhere nowadays, there's some tough parts of Memphis. So yeah, you probably have to figure out where those are and avoid those, but yeah, stick around close to the campus and, and do your thing. All right, so you were lobbying to be on the Board of Regents, and ironically, now that we're talking to you, we've got a new president, we've got a new athletic director, too, so I do want to congratulate you on your first week of being unofficially on the Board of Regents. You got stuff done, my man. Yeah, or (laughs) the fear of a lunatic actually doing it. (laughs) No, I'm I'm just kidding. I'm I'm glad they got, you know, got stuff handled. It's I, I'm. I have a lot of trust issues, so I just find it very odd that all this stuff got handled uh-huh. a couple of days after somebody left. So, well, and that's that's the question. The first question I have to you: When you learned, like we did on Wednesday, something about Wednesday at nine a.m. is all of a sudden a lot of athletic director news in the state. Uh, two weeks in a row now. Were you? maybe suspicious isn't the right word, but were you a little curious about how quickly that turnaround took place from losing an athletic director to, to hiring an athletic director? And really every, every day in between there was, there was zero news about whether it was Dannon or anyone being zeroed in on. No, because you know, it's what I was talking about. I mean, we expect athletic directors to have a black book of who they want if any of their coaches leave. So we should probably expect the powers that be to have an AD in that same black book if their AD leaves. So I thought that was smooth. It, the first thing, if I'm Dan and that I do is I try to separate, like completely separate the athletic department from the university. Mm-hmm. Cause I just, I think there's so much up top that's still corrupt and just, just go be do what John Cook does. Just like, hey, we're better own entity over here. You just leave us alone. Yeah, we're gonna make money. Just don't bother us. I would one hundred percent take that attitude and mindset. They already view you as that, so just act in that way. You 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 are a portion of a corporation. You'll eventually have to answer to them at some point, but try to eliminate yourself from as much of the drama as you can. Mm-hmm. I think it just improves your organization a hundredfold. You were around an athletic director who had, well, really the recent, most recent longest tenure in Bill Byrne. Uh, we didn't get a chance to ask you this this last week. I don't know how much it is with the student athletes in place if they're if they're asked, "Hey, what would you want to see in the next athletic director?" But you've you've lived the life of a, as a student athlete. You're a supporter of the football program in the athletic department. Verse, what did what did you think was going to be one of the more important qualities that was going to come out of the next athletic director? given the current situation with the athletic department and, and really college football in general? You got to have, you have to have utmost confidence in, in your, in your procedures and how you're going to do everything. And they, they just, they need somebody that's, that's forward thinking. Yep. Agreed. Um, 
can adapt to things, isn't afraid to stir some stuff up. Um, yeah, you just got to have a guy that's just willing to go. I, I would only even go as far as they rock the boat. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. And, and, and don't be afraid to tell people, you know. Sometimes we as Nebraskans and, and guys with ties to Nebraska, we don't want to talk about when things are bad because we were we were programmed that it all stays in house and it's all this and it's all that. Well, the the reality of the situation is not thirty years ago. Yeah. And the world is a different place. And so if you're getting a bunch of, of BS, just let it loose. Say, like, hey, this is what they want me to do. Just thought everybody should know. Mm-hmm. And then let the mob take care of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if they want you to do things that are outside your beliefs, what you, what your vision for the athletic department is, because that's kind of why they hire you is to, in, in put your, put your vision into, into motion. If they want to make you do something you don't want to do, just tell everybody. And then eventually you'll run out of people to tell things about. You'll get good people in there and then it'll be great again. A lot of the, the history of Troy Dannon that people will talk about, they'll bring up uh, being on a lot of different committees, competition committees, a lot of the football oversight type committees, if you will, and I, not necessarily on an oversight committee, but on the committees that are trying to better the game, that are trying to evolve uh, the college football game into the current world that it it, it is in and it is going. Is that something that we can make the connection. Hey, that's, that's a good, that's an important, that's a, an important part of the resume. That's an important thing to have experienced for the next athletic director in Nebraska. Uh, yeah. I, I think you have to have a pulse on the direction that like you have. Okay. When we were great at things, mm-hmm. We were very, very proactive. You just saw, you know, homage paid to Boyd Epley with the new weight room and the little intricacies in there. And they'll credit people with where it all started. We were one of the first to have an academic area. We were one of the first, we were one of the first to have a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those little things. Now we are reactionary. Yep. Oh, S, we forgot about this. Oh, S, we forgot about that. You've got to get people, and I know there's been a lot of people there for a long time, and it's probably okay to part ways with some of them, just because they've they've seen too much, they've been there too long. You just sometimes it's time to go. But I, I mean, I, I and I've said this before, I gut the whole thing, yeah. I gut everybody, and, and just get new, forward thinking people in there to get you back toward the precipice of it instead of being reactionary to everything. No, I, that the makes sense. Stone, ears always listening. Mm-hmm. Hey, we think this is coming about. We think this is where it's headed. We think they're going to bring all these collaboratives in in house to yep. make the university distribute the money. Great, let's get that department started now, so we're not having to just scramble to do it, and then we make a bad hire. Yep. Like let's have everybody waiting. Like that was one of the cooler things about it, and we were dumb and we just took it for granted. Mm-hmm. We're just like, what do you mean? You don't know, like you talk to your buddies at other colleges, like, oh, I may have a nutritionist said this. Do you have a nutritionist? Like, yeah, you guys don't like, no, we don't. So being ahead of the curve and being advanced and pressing the envelope and those kind of things, I, I think would be a great direction for the athletic director to take things. Matt rule said something interesting on Monday, and I want to get your interpretation of this. He brought up a, a lot of positive things in the wake of, at that time, not having an athletic director. And he he hit a lot of notes that I think we all knew Matt Rule would. In talking about the team, he brought up giving them the gift of high expectations. And with spring football starting on Sunday, your interpretation of what Matt Rule just said is what? That if you're not in it to win, then don't come. I mean, it's... Like that's, yeah, that's to me again, being spoiled in my athletic career, Mm -hmm. losing or or being the best is an afterthought. And when it happens, it's embarrassing. And so if you don't have that vision for the athletic department and, and every piece of that athletic department, then don't take the job. Like, like that's, 
people get mad at me at the beginning of seasons when I coached because they say, hey, what do you think we're going to be? I was like, 13-0 and state champion. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, you know, we got this deficiency. That's, you know, that's the way you see it. Yeah. Like, I don't see it that way, and I can't think that way because this is how I've learned to think. So I have to, and if, if my vision and your vision don't jive, I can, you can fire me right now, mm-hmm. but I can't go, I can't go coach with people and say, Oh, we might, we might make the playoffs. Cause I, I can't, I don't think like that. Yeah. Like it doesn't, especially in a competitive situation. Like I hope Dan is one of the most competitive people in the world, but then when he goes out in public can control it and say, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. Da, 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 da. Right. But that's, that vision has to be there because again, turning back the clock, Bill Byrne was there to win. He, he didn't, he didn't care how you did it. You're going to go win though. You're going to have everything at your fingertips to go make sure your team can win. Like that's the other piece is that they, they can, they can cry poor all they want. They have plenty of money to get any and everything, any of their coaches need. It's, but they're just like playtime is over because college sports are going in a weird direction. So you better get up to speed fast. Or you're going to get left behind. That just, that's the truth of the matter. Get it figured out fast, get going and execute the plan. Everybody, as Trev said, when he left a unified vision. Yeah. Right. Yep. So he's telling you right there that not everybody's on the same page up at that university. Mm-hmm. So get your vision unified, be able to com- to convey it. I always used to make fun of when I was at the, the wealth advisory firm that I was at, that the boss would make us repeat the mission and vision statement. I thought it was dumb. But at the end of the day, it made a lot of sense to me. Yeah. But now, that whole athletic department, any coach, any admin, probably don't have to go down to the players, but the adults should all be able to say the mission and vision of Nebraska athletics. I think that's very fair. And if you, it, it's almost, you almost have to take it to a militant type of style. Sure. Where it's like, if I'm the AD and you see me come down the hallway and I say mission and vision, and you don't, you don't give them to me, then you're now on the list. You yeah. could be turned. <laughs> like because that. now I know you don't care enough to memorize two sentences. Yeah. So if uh, you don't like it, you got somebody else waiting for your job. Yep. Uh, I'll get you out of here on this because it, it, what you just said there makes me think of, okay, with spring ball and with, with Rule talking about having the high expectations on this team, is it, is it fair to say that this team, compared to a year ago where you're feeling out the, the, the new coaching staff and trying to figure out how things are going to go, that all of those things are behind you, that it's fair that this team should be able to share that vision with what Matt Rule has, those high expectations that that, that group should be 100% bought in and that we've, we've, we've crossed that threshold with this program in year two. That that's not saying it will be, but yeah, that's where it should be. Just, just to clarify, because I've said on here many times that I thought, you know, and I've been pretty close when Nebraska is a five or six man team, I'm not coaching those teams. So that, that isn't why, I, or that, that's why I can have a different expectation of it. Mm-hmm. But they should all be able to, and they probably can, to be honest with you. I think that message gets conveyed a lot on what they feel Nebraska football is going to be. They, they, I know for a fact they could probably recite what they, they, their cultural expectation is. Yeah. <clears throat> because they act differently than they ever have before. And they do things, they carry themselves different. And that's, that's just it's repetitive. I mean, Look at any of the of the <laughs> of the morons that I call my friends. <laughs> you know, ask them if anything good happens after ten o'clock. They'll say no. Yeah. Ask them what they think of Missouri. Missouri's <laughs> a really good team. They're coached really well. We're looking forward to the opportunity to play them. <laughs> like it's just you, your program doing it. Hey boys, I got to roll. Have a good day. All right, thanks, first. Uh Matt Verzal, busy, busy man. I do remember that yeah. Missouri story though that he would always say that. Yeah, uh, yeah they're very good. We're Look forward to playing them. It's it's the they were taught well. I, I and I know Gary had brought it up too. It was one of the the parts of Matt Rule's press conference on Monday when they shifted from you know the state of the football program under not only Matt Rule's leadership but Trev Albers as the athletic director. When he started getting into the actual team itself, and when he talked about the gift of high expectations, I think 
that can be all well and good and it could be just something that Matt Rule is saying to as he does a lot hit the hit the right note and being able to read the room but you do think of the type of team that they bring back you think of the type of guys that they had on a successful defense a year ago that are coming back you do have albeit in experience at the quarterback position you feel like you have the opportunity to significantly elevate that position on a side of the football that kept Nebraska, I don't think that's even being unfair saying this, but kept Nebraska from getting to a bowl game. That a lot of those things that are in place right now and that overall culture, and as Verz said too, the the type of adults that are a part should also share those high expectations where it, it doesn't it doesn't need to be Matt Rule telling us at a press conference on Monday that this team has high expectations or they're giving them the gift of that. I think that that should have been a given. When you saw everything like the dust settle after, is Tony White going to be here? Is he maybe going to USC? Is he maybe being looked at by UCLA? All of those things, once it all settled and you know who's back, you know who you're rolling with for the 24 season. I don't I don't think there should be one person that looks at this football team and questions whether they're bought in on the next phase or the next step for this football program under this coaching staff. And that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to say I'm by Matt Rule saying that everybody in that room also knows that they're going to go say 9 and 3. No. But the high expectations of being so close to getting to a bowl game in year number one and being able to make that year two jump. And yes, the schedule also plays a part in that as well. There's a lot of parts about what he said in the high expectation that it just feels different this spring, that I think you look for the big jump by the time you watch the red-white game that this thing looks a lot more cleaned up than it did a year ago. We're watching the football all over the turf and thinking, ah, oh, it's just a bad spring game. Nice. We, look better. I we really realize, do think oh, it's going to look better. I'm talking about the spring game. Obviously, next season's going to look better, but I'm saying the spring, I think there's going to look better. I'm excited. I'm positive today. Well, we we got to be positive. This is all you're doing, Nick. You bring out the positivity yeah, in me. I try, to, I, try, I try. I try to impact people in a positive way. It's just what we do, right? Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to tell you why you can be positive about Nebraska, Texas, and we'll give our thoughts on the game. Maybe, maybe you're not. Maybe you don't like the outcome of it, uh, but we'll, we'll get real. Maybe we'll get pacing. real with the, mat, the matchup. And, maybe uh, you're drunk already. Yeah, well, even better. It's a Friday, so you got a, a full uh, weekend to recover as well. Uh, hopefully it is a, a big party that lasts well into the night. That's what we're hoping for, but we will tell you if we think that's going to happen and get you set up for the day of hoops as we wrap things up here on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Hi, this is Doug Nodgaard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. 
Riding season is here, and it's time to trade in and trade up. Or, if you ain't riding it, Lus Hills Harley-Davidson is buying it. Sell your Harley-Davidson today. Lus Hills Harley-Davidson. Rise up and ride on. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance. America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. It's basketball time in Omaha, and when you're downtown for the games, be sure to stop into Cubby's Old Market at 13th and Jackson. Gear up for pre-parties, tailgates, or post-game. Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade broths. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Hi friends, Kent Pavelka, courtside, getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins Weather Guard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Make the right call! Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jim. We'll do their official walk in Memphis at 5.30 today as... Fans will stumble. Yeah, they might be stumbling oh, in Memphis. Oh, there's a place on Beale Street we ate, and I have pictures on it, because sometimes I, you know, I go back and I look to it, and I get fully tossed, as Gary says. It was an amazing just southern meal we had. Oh, I, if I could remember, I would tell Husker fans, go have a meal there. You can't go wrong with a lot of stuff. Yeah, I sure. like Memphis. I've never been. I've... Um, I'm sure I will go there at some point in my life, but I've never been. We Sounds like a lot. Graceland. You did? Or no, did we, well, we went, but then we saw the prices and we're like, you know what? Here, just pull off to the Good. side, put the Elvis channel on the satellite for about 10 minutes, hear a couple of <laughs> songs. We're like, it's like that only on the other side of the wall. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, like the Grand Canyon. Uh, don't forget our NCAA Westwood One coverage begins minutes. as soon as we are off in the minutes. air. Yes, in minutes. And then you uh, are going to be... Uh, here in Northwestern Florida, Atlantic to lead the day off, followed by Colgate, Baylor, UAB, San Diego State. And then we are off and rolling. Nebraska AM is at 550. Huskers, a one and a half point favorite. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I have to take Texas AM to win the game. I have to stay true to the bit. This is going to be a tough no, one. No, no, don't, don't, don't mess around now. Stick no, this, to the this, bit. this game is going to be a tough one for Nebraska. And I love the, the positivity. I think everybody should enjoy the ride. 
if Nebraska is a, I think you're going to know all you need to know about this game in the first 10 minutes of how sure, Nebraska is from a physical standpoint, how they match Texas A&M, because if they are able from a mental standpoint to match them physically, when it comes to being able to box out, being able to limit the second opportunities, I do believe Nebraska offensively will show up. It is a question of whether they can limit the guard play from Texas A&M. That's their best players and be able to neutralize what they do on the boards. If they can do that, they will be successful. But yes, I have Texas A&M winning. Sir Parker, four touchdowns. Bucky Richardson, five touchdowns. <laughs> Quentin Corey at 15 tackles. R.C. Slocum leads to another yeah. impressive victory. Jackie Sherrill castrates another bull. Mm-hmm. Look it up. He did it once before the Texas game. Oh, wow. That's something. Yeah. R.C. a better man. Better that Texan. Is, that is something. Uh, and don't forget, Creighton basketball is back on the airwaves tomorrow night. That game will be a late one. Especially for the people in Pittsburgh. Yes. Yeah. It's it's in, in the 9 o'clock hour connor's gonna have a Pittsburgh. terrible towel wrapped around and just to keep him warm and yes. staying awake and- yeah you've got uh the tip-off will be 8 40 central time at omaha games by the way tomorrow get underway at 5 30 approximately it's better so you bet basically 5 30 in the 7 50 game uh tomorrow for the omaha regional as well so some later games uh in omaha late night tomorrow night with creighton men's basketball and then today tonight early evening all with the, nebraska the, 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 a&m 550 yeah 72nd and dodge will be calling yeah. if uh things go well party party hardy they That's win tonight holds. frank mass 27 points 18 rebounds okay oh uh, i if they win tonight I'm i hope i hope rink, the, I, I hope rink shows up and sends uh, and by the way zach wanted us to to make sure people knew he thinks rink is a good player he just doesn't think he's a good big uh uh, Big Ten five, which I don't think is crazy. Oh, either. I get what he's saying. Yeah, yeah no, I, no, no, no. I don't think that's crazy either. Uh, big thanks Maybe to our guests. His bit. Don't change that. It, it might be. It might. It might be because look where we are right now. Uh, big thanks to Creighton assistant basketball coach Ryan Miller and also Matt Verzal. If you missed any of the show, radio. Re-